Rise and grind. What's going on, y'all? What's happening? What it do? What it do? What it do? What it don't do? What it is gonna do? Another uh morning show, man. The Bully Breakfast Club, man. Just waiting on my co-host to touch down. Got a couple. Um, I think I got some good topics to talk about. I don't think I know for sure, man. It's definitely something that you know people want to know. You know, it. You know, some people might be interested in engaging in these propositions. There might be others that just don't want to. You know what I'm saying? So. We about to see right now. What's happening, Jober? What's happening? What it do, man? Rise and grind, you need. What's happening, bro? Yo. Top of the morning, Top bro. of the morning. Ready, man? You ready to give them that breakfast this morning or what, bro? Yes, All right. sir. Y'all know what's going on, man. It's the Bully Breakfast Club hosted by Kenny Bell, man, with Playman Kindles. Go ahead, bro. Introduce yourself. Let them know what we're doing. This and you know it's unique bully. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of Florida with it. You feel me? Uh, Home of the wolf pit, powered by the pit. However you say pit, this, yeah. pit, that. You feel me? You're looking at yes, active sir. members of the pit. You feel me? We ain't we we come here every morning to you know what I'm saying to bless the bully family. Nothing but straight positivity. Start your day off right. Cause once it hit twelve o'clock, we ain't you know what I'm saying. Y'all y'all on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for man. real though, man. We appreciate everybody that's this morning, man. So talk to me, bro. Like what's what's RCG? What's what, going on? How do you man? think we should uh, serve them this morning, man? Man, shit, you know it ain't you know it ain't in the bully breakfast club if we don't get it. Okay, so, so I got I got a I got a quick question, man. I'm gonna go ahead and type it real quick, man. Top of the morning, morning everybody that's tapping in, you feel me? Okay. Golden what it do, Savannah Bullies. <laughs> The first, this the first question, y'all. This the first question right here, man. Now, Not you know, uh, everybody's everybody's uh, uh, goal in this game is to achieve something. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, you know what I'm saying. Let's talk about the people that aren't really too too much dog savvy or not really into dogs, but still seek. You know, uh, opportunity with our community. You know what I'm saying. So there, there, there comes. I'm saying co-ownership. So would that be something that you interested in, bro? Ownership, bro. I've done co-ownership. So how do you feel about co-ownership? But the thing about co-ownership, like a lot of people don't understand is that it's got to be a common understanding. It has to be a common ground where both parties right. actually understand. Because a co-ownership well, can either go, you know what I'm saying, a co-ownership, me personally, the reason what a co-ownership is for right. is to help out another party. You know what I'm saying? Whatever whatever party it is, whether it's your, 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 you co-owning or somebody co-owning with you, you're helping out somebody because they don't have everything and anything to go, which ain't nothing wrong with doing it. But it has to be a common ground law, you know what I'm saying? To where like, all right, well fine. What 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 are you know, the common ground laws that you feel food. uh are to like, discuss for okay. co ownership? Like Okay, so I, I can speak on like me and my me and my counterparty, you know what I'm saying? Like we co own a bitch. And it's like, you know, we come to the agreement is that we bust down everything. Vet bills, the food, whatever she needs or that dog may need we split right in half. I send him copies of the receipts or whatever I do, what whatever needs to be done. Yeah. So we're on the same page. You know what I'm saying? And then like, okay, well fine. Like how we sold a litter off of her or or out of that bitch and whatever. You know, I'd be on the phone with him while, you know, he's listening to me complete the transaction. So he knows that he's not getting you know what I'm saying, he's not getting a short end 
or he don't feel like he's getting okay. he's not getting I got a comment. I've got a you comment. I can cut you and, off and break that. I got a comment from RCG underscore bulls underscore music underscore fashion. It says it's okay to co own as long as the two owners have a clear understanding on the financial end with the vet fees as well as stud fee split and pump backs or sales. Mm -hmm. Because you might have you might look at it like this. Let's just say hypothetically speaking, like with me, this is how I look at it. Say mm -hmm. you and me is co-owning a dog, right? Boom. Let's just say a, it, it all depends. If, yeah. you, if you housing the bitch or if I'm housing the bitch, if you housing the bitch and whatever, boom, we agree in the stud, we split the stud, feel the case, boom, 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 boom. You whelp the litter, you get first okay. pick. I whelp the litter. I I get first pick. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because obviously one of us is doing a little bit more work Correct. in order to get that pick. You feel me? So, I mean, it's only right. And then when it comes on to like splitting and doing certain types of things and whatever, like it just got to be a, it just has to be an understanding of both parties. Well, it has got, to be. Like, the way that we got is Bully cool. Breed tapping in, man. He wanted to comment, comment on this. Uh, oh, never mind. He declined. Uh, RCG. If you able to jump on the live, man, anybody anybody that's able to jump on the live and you want to speak on uh this topic, you know, uh are uh, more than welcome. Again, y'all know as we said before, this is an educational platform and there's so many viewpoints on, you know, uh particular um uh, topics. If you want to jump on here and, and state what you uh exercise or you know what I'm saying, what how you feel no. Feel free. Yeah. RCG is uh, Do me a favor. Do Yo. yourself. Let us know. Yo, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you, Nick, 100%, man. As long as you know you got clarification amongst the do, do, still owning the dog. Real quick, man. brother. Like, real quick, brother. Introduce yourself real quick. Let them know where you're coming from and who you represent. Quick. Oh, I'm from Florida. RCG. CG Bulls underscore music underscore fashion. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm I'm high in on it. I breathe in house. I got like fluffy Frenchies working all the time. But back to what Unique was saying, man, I agree with him 100%. Long as you got the agreements and y'all got a great understanding and a mutual understanding on how it's going to work financially, because yeah. that be the whole ownership that you see in the game, it be finances. Like yep. if I got the dog, yeah. the dog gets sick, and you know that I take care of it. So if he may be enough, I feel like I can pay it, I'm going to pay it. But if it might be a little too much or something and I need partner to chip in, it shouldn't be no, no, you know what I'm saying, no discrepancies on that. Same as food, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, food so, so for the dog. Listen, not to interrupt you, brother, but say that they weren't financially stable like that. And you were hit with a bill that was, let's just say, three thousand. Now, now, does this play any no, part no, no, it's, of it's, whatever the dog has a litter? Yeah, that, that's why I said if we conversate and we got this conversation and this. More than likely, I'm gonna go and co-ownership with somebody I really know, and I'm just keep it real. I'm not going to co-ownership right. with somebody I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like if I know this guy and I know what you know he's going through, he know what I'm going through. We gonna work shit out. But that's the biggest yeah. thing. We got to conversate. We got to have, you know what I'm saying, understanding on what's going on with co-ownership. Like you say, financially, I think that just be the biggest right. problem, bro. And like Unique said, right. if I'm doing deals, have them on the speakerphone. Let him hear what's going on so everything can be clarified. Yeah. long as everybody got that, you know, that understanding exactly. that everything is cool and I know what's going on, everything be all right. But when it be that shady shit, he telling you what's going on, just telling you. It ain't gonna yeah. work, you know what I'm saying? So let me ask you, do you more so prefer yeah. to co-own with somebody that is into what we're doing? Or are you more so, like, let's just say you weren't really financially stable, but you know somebody could, you know, um, finance what you're trying to do. That didn't have, have no knowledge in what you were trying to do. Do you feel like you can, you know, make something happen before, like, Something well, if you, I'm going to be honest, if you know they have a business savvy, if you know they got business, you know what I'm saying, a mind frame, I'm pretty sure, yeah, because this is a business at the end of the day. You know right. what I'm saying? 
But because like me, sometimes it's not right. my nest. Some people got great work ethic. You know what I'm saying? I might have right. a homie who don't make the bread, but he know how to keep these dogs bathed, clean. He got the kennel good. You know what I'm saying? So like sometimes it's not always money. Work come to like we got a lot of people who got the bread, but poor work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Kennels yeah. look like shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you go hand to hand. You got work and you got money. So with me, I'm just more about if you are really about the game, about the dog game. And if you got the money, you got the money. But if you don't, and you got the hell of a work ethic. We could work together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I got a few yeah. uh, comments from the comment. Uh, it says co-owners cool. Oh, real underscore King Bully says co-owners cool, but just make sure you don't, you know what's or you do what's best. For Oh, the money plays a part, but just make sure you do what's best for your dog. Island Boys is yes, but sometimes me, sometimes you. Uh, Moon underscore Rock underscore Bully says co on will definitely set apart a real relate friendship. Uh, Mountain Edge Kennel says, how do y'all charge for puppies versus co owns? That's a good one. Let me let, let me. I'm I'm gonna go off of that right there. Mountain underscore edge. Underscore Kendall says. All right. I'm a how much do y'all talk? Nobody else come in. Oh. No, nah, I was asking you, bro. If you got time, he's out of here. All right. Cool. Uh, <laughs> let me get let me get Jessica <laughs> on here real quick because she's real active in the comment section as well, man. Again, anybody that's on the live that wants to engage, rise and grind. Let them know. Who him is where how long are you? I'm, I'm I haven't seen you in a bit. <laughs> well, I lost my right. other pages, so this is my new page. Um, okay. This is a hey, topic him, I... Him, oh, my name's Jessica. Know who you are real quick, who you represent. Okay. I'm in Miami. I'm originally family Frenchies. Now on, I'm MN Game Frenchies. Um, I've been breeding for 10 years Frenchies, 21 years overall. Um, I have bullies. Frenchies, uh, English Bulldogs, and a few small breeds. What's up, Lucky? Um, so this so, is a topic. Yeah. Hold on, because I still got my morning hair. Um, this is a topic that I, I do, I am passionate about because I have a lot of co-owns. And they've okay. all gone well for me. But I don't co-own with somebody that just hits me up and doesn't have enough money to pay for the dog and just wants to call home because they, they don't have enough money to pay for the dog. What happens with that is that it never turns out right. There's two there's two reasons people want to call on with you. One is because they believe in your vision, they agree with where you're going, and they want to be a part of it. The other part of it is that, or they want a mentorship. The other part of it is that, damn, I know you're asking six for the dog, but I only got three, so can we do a co own Because what happens with that is that they just really wanted the dog and it just doesn't work out in the end because you you don't have that intention of following or going or believing in or anything they just want the dog to do what they want to do with their future breedings so you can't do a co-own just because what? you know you're gonna cut a deal and make a sale when i do a co-own it's somebody that i've talked to that i've seen that i've seen at shows so watched the the way that they make decisions and stuff like that with other situations before I even decide, okay, we could do a call. Okay. I I I, See, I feel like I feel like I feel like the most I feel like the main the main reason on why people do call on it, it's not even really for the vision part so much. I feel yeah, like it's because that's of finances. The problem. And when and when it's you do them just of because of finances, most of the time they don't end up that great. Um, right, but then that's where that's where you have to put in oh, the situations that there should you be have a to contract. Have like a I have a contract. Guide. I do my co owns yeah. maybe a little bit different than other people. So when it comes to my co owns, my contract will state um this female hey leave her alone this female is being purchased on a co-own it will also stay hold on sorry my puppy come here they hire so so it'll put on i'll put on there that for the first litter um i get first pick that my co-owner gets second pick and they can do what they please with that pup right okay then we go ahead and sell third and on and we split the profits 
when I say split the profits, I also cover half of the insemination section, you you know, stud fee, if we did a stud fee, all of that. Anything that has reproduction, I do. And then for the second, okay. Okay. second litter, okay. owner gets first pick, I get second pick. The reason that I offer that is because sometimes people don't want to co-own forever. And since they're, you know, sometimes they fall in love with that litter, you want to keep this one. You know? So... First, yeah. first litter, I get first pick because provided the female, they get second. On the second litter, they get first pick, I get second pick, and we set, uh, sell the rest and split the okay. profits. On okay. it's all there. So, I have nothing to do with it. So now, so now I'm gonna ask this now because you just said like you get first and second. So y'all collectively produce this dog together. Let's say y'all, it was a co-own and y'all decide to co-own again after that so determining whoever is keeping that co-own would determine Eline Frenchies pick? that's somebody I co-own with right there I'm sorry so we both so we produce the dog together yeah yeah let's just say we produce, yeah we produce the dog on a co-own already so let's just say you had to tell we co-own or whatever the case is and it just happened to be you took the pick I took yeah. the it was a sleeper female that you liked or whatever the case is. So then y'all decided to call. So from that point would be because y'all both collectively produced that pup, would would that first go to the co-owner or would I'm it still pretty go flexible. to you first? So like, for instance, Eline is in here. Um, I, if, if we go ahead and co-own like that and it's just from a pup, I'm pretty flexible. If they, if they see something that they like, because they're my pick. So we could talk about it and they'll say, well, I like this one. Right. All right, cool. Well, I like this. And then, you know, maybe on the next one is when, you know, we'll decide, okay, well then I'm gonna get first pick on the next one. Like I'm pretty fucking flexible when it comes to that. At the end of the day, whoever's whelping the litter, I feel not has the upper hand cause that's bad, but you know, they, and like I said, sometimes you fall for that one dog that you're like, oh, this is the one I want. You know? And I don't like to take that from them because me taking that dog at that point and being, you know, know the one I want, so I'm going to take this one, that kills the relationship long term. And I would never want to kill the relationship long term if what's going for us is working. You know what I mean? Okay. So now, uh, so now let me ask. So first the first pup that y'all co-own like the first litter that you co-own with or whatever are you welcoming the so litter the dog is your co there is so them? when i i do a co-own that they're purchasing a pup from me right they came to me and they said hey jay i want this pup all right cool i don't want to get rid of this pup i really want to own all right jay let's do it so they'll go ahead and whelp the litter they do whelp the litter now if they call me and they say damn i have this family event or i have this you think you could take the litter you know, for a couple of weeks, or you think you could take at, at three weeks, maybe you could start them on mush, this, that, and the third, you know, I'm flexible too. Like if they're local, then I'll do it. But a lot of my co owns are not local. So I have a lot of co owns in, in California. Yo, yo, yo. So, and I'm in Miami. <laughs> going down. Man. So, so, but okay. okay, but like, so like the reason why I asked that is because I heard you say that you would say, and I'm not, I'm not going against uh, about what you're saying. You feel me? Like you got what works for you, but to me, like I like, you don't feel no type of way when I say that because like you're not really. I mean, like yeah, I know you produce a dog and whatever, but like the whelping part, like everybody knows the whelping is probably one of the mm -hmm. hardest thing in doing this breeding these dogs. So you still wouldn't take that in, in, into consideration on whether that person I, is first pick or not i get first pick the in the first litter they get sec first pick in the second litter we both get our first picks however they'll just be two different litters and i'm gonna be honest with you uh -huh. and i'm gonna be honest with you throughout the years nine times out of ten we've never had the first the same first pick my friends and a lot of other people or what i need okay. tends to be different Right. So one, it, one thing that I want to ask, ask quick that stuck out, not to interrupt you, but you said you all the way in Florida, but you got co owns all the way in California. How do you go California, about this? California, like, Virginia. 
Like, okay, so as far state, as state would, like, like, so do you, if, if that was somebody's choice in the co ownership, do you hardly advise them to make sure that they come with contract due to, you I know, have they, picking up? I'm only getting like half of it. I apologize. I was saying you got co ownerships in different states. Yeah. Um, so, with that, that being said, how do you do you strongly advise people that might take that same uh, uh, do contract agreements as well? So, like I said, when it comes to contracts, I mean, we're going. I've most likely met these people before, either at a dog show that I was at in Cali. We've talked for a while, so, you know, things like that. I, so I, you can't hit me up today. Huh? Huh? Your, your calls are more personal, like you know these people, so you're more familiar. Well, I don't know them like, oh my gosh, we talk every day, but I do know them, you know, like more or less, like I have met them. I've had said, hi, my name is Jessica, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't, I won't co-own with anybody that just calls me today and says, hey, I want to co-own with you. No, like we will talk. We will chop it up. We'll talk yeah. about what your vision is. Because I'd also like to make sure that I'm placing my dog with somebody that has not the same vision as me, but something similar or, or that they're honest with me with what their vision is, you know? And I can tell them, hey, you know what? My lines, unfortunately, they ain't going to do good with that. Or, you know, hey, this is a good fit. Let's do it. Because... I already have dogs that I know like what their capabilities are, you know, like I have six generation dogs. Um, so that's why I'm a little I, bit, not picky, but you know, I'm a little bit, I like to know what the person's vision is before any dog. Hold on, one puppy is beating up the other puppy. Can y'all stop? Can you hear me? Say it again. Um, I said I have a I had a how do you, you guys do your pet home. Hold on, hold on real hold on real quick, Mark. Somebody in the comments asked her a question. Uh have you ever had a bad experience of a culture? And how do you handle it? So I have been blessed to not have um what, what I did have was maybe not a great financial experience, but I've not had a bad experience. And so my last co-own litter, not too long ago, probably like about two months ago, the kid, you know, he's, he's new, but he listened. He did amazing at whelping the litter. I guided him through it and he really fell in love with the bulldog in the litter, right? We had five puppies and he really fell in love with another female in the litter, which would have been my first pick, to be honest with you. Um, and I told him, you know what? We got five puppies. If you want to keep two of those puppies for you, no pressure. Keep three puppies for you, and I'm going to take two. So I took two puppies from the litter myself and to do what I wanted to, and he took three puppies because his mom wanted to keep the little boy really bad. But he didn't okay. want to keep the boy. He wanted to keep a girl. But he whelped the litter, and I'm not going to, you know, like, come on. I'm not going to fight and kill my very good uh, co-owner that's taking care of the adult dog that did an amazing job for his first time whelping, that heard me out, that listened to me. I'm not going to cut myself for long-term business. So I was like, you know what? Go ahead and take three. I'm going to take two. And, you know, we call it an even split. And he was like, oh, my God, thank you. I was like, yeah, no pressure. You know what I mean? So sometimes you got to read, read the scenario, like what you have in front of you. You want to cut yourself. If it's going good, y'all get along everything's going good and the dogs are taken care of and, you know, cared for, there's no reason to fuck it up, you know? So now I got two puppies that I can sell three puppies, which was only going to sell one of the three. So that's on him. So, so no, I you did that on the next litter. Do you call told them on the on next it? litter? Um, actually he told me, he said, look, Jay, I know you really wanted the Merle one, but next litter, can you get, first pick from from there and i was like sure no pressure um because i still got one of the dogs that i really like you know what i mean like again f she was first pick right. of the color you know what i mean like yeah 
Right. Did mm -hmm. AA um, Merle. So it was like, oh my gosh, I really want this. But there was still, like if you see the whole litter and I could show you all five puppies, we're all badass dogs. So it really wasn't a first pick in that litter. But he offered to me, he said, Jay, thank you for doing this. And he was like, on the next litter, first pick. Because I know we didn't really kind of do it on this one. And I was like, no pressure. Let's, you know, take it as it comes. Uh, so, huh. Oh, go ahead, mom. My fault. Uh, how do y'all do y'all mail co-owns? Because you know, I call, I'll, I'll okay, call so my mail with my kids. I have a mail in you know California. I mean? so how, His how name's Cairo. He is three years old now. I've been co-owning him for three years. And the way that my co-owns work for males is you pay half of what I want for him. And then everybody outside has to pay, of course, his stud fee. And we split stud fees. However, because she's the one that's going to the vet and pulling the dog and shipping it and taking, you know, time out of out of her day to get all that done. I, I give them, whoever takes care of the whole, you know, studying process, I give them the 500 extra. So, mm -hmm. like, let's say the dog stud fee is 5K, right? She gets 25, I get 25. But in reality, I'll take two and I give her three so that she can, you know, compensate with that extra five of having to run around and God forbid she got to take the day off of work or whatever the case may be, you know? So... I got I got a quick question for you, real quick, from Postman underscore oh. Exotics. He says, so when you take a loss in the litter, pups die or something of such, how do you go by that? So you co-own the dog and all the pups died? Yep. You got to chalk it up to the game. Know that not everything is going to be uh, rainbows uh, and, little, and little, sunshines, little. and you go to I the think, next litter. I think he was... Meaning more so like what if they just said that? Are you going to want to see proof of this or are you just going to take their word for it? I mean, I've never had an issue where I've had to say, send me proof. Most most of the time they're sending me stuff, you know, as they're telling me. Yeah. Or they're they're contacting me or we're FaceTiming as the pups are, are down, you know, going downhill. Like I would never have to say, hey, Go ahead and send it to me. No, no. Most of the time, they're calling me. They're asking me, "Hey, hey what can I do? Do you, do you know yeah. what I should do? Look, this is what's going on." So I'm already in the process with them. You know, well, like hypothetical, hypothetical. Let's just are you going to ask for like I need to see for like for sure. There should always be like open communication, like. Okay. Uh, yeah, there should always be sure. open communication, and you should always send either a video so, as they're declining or after they've passed. You know that. We should, we're that's really, what I'm saying. Yeah. You yeah. should the know at the whole the whole time. It shouldn't just be like, "Hey, uh, pups are great," and then a week later, "Hey, all the pups died." No, that's that's a red flag, a hundred percent. You know, that's a wait, yeah. hold up, wait a minute, right. you know, but if I'm right. in the process with you and you're contacting me and communicating with me, which yep. is how it should be, then I shouldn't, I wouldn't feel like, oh my God, I need to ask for proof because I was in that process with you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the question. So on the co-ownership part, right? Go ahead. How do you, how do you, no, you. Good. Uh, so on that co-ownership and whatever, yes. like, do you I keep paperwork? paperwork on How does that and work? Females, and okay. it says All it right. in my contract that I keep um, the paperwork. I release paperwork after the second litter is done, and my pick is home. I release the papers and okay. sign them over to them. I, you know, transfer them over to them. On my so, males, so, I'm sorry. So with on my females, males, I also keep paperwork because they have the physical dog. I keep the paperwork. I go ahead and. Um, submit everything I need to submit for males and females and send everything out. Thanks. All right. So, yeah. so on your females, you only do of two course, yes. and then you let them have them for the third? Okay. Yeah, I, I try to I try to do one, but I now, charge a little more now, for my on females, females that you're only because gonna I'm do really one litter, gonna yes, do one. I do charge more. But there's times I've learned over the years that sometimes I don't get exactly what I want in that one litter. <laughs> and when I say right. what I want, it's because it's right, what I, right, I want right. as my next lineup in my camp. Not because I want to go 
and make a thousand, you know, twenty thousand dollars off of the next litter. And you know, it's something that I know I didn't want to exactly right. sell this female because I had a vision for this female. So okay. now, real quick, real quick, I got a quick another another statement from section from Cookie Factory underscore Burner. He said, the stud Thank owner you has Thank to you. Approve. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the comments. Thank you, guys. Go ahead. He says the stud owner has to approve the litters so they don't, uh, like, basically play themselves at the end of the day if they do bad business. So are you are you um, approving the, the females that are being took to this dog, or is it just you leave it up to them? and then they let so you know what's something it's... that's conversed prior right so right. we we talk about that prior to the actual co-own itself for instance with kai um i have another boy down here in miami that's getting started now but again we've had this conversation prior where she had a standard for her boy um and she said damn jay i really don't want him to just breed to whatever and i was like i 100 percent have your back on that no problem i don't care for him to breed to just anything um so we do come to an agreement and we haven't had an issue where one of us says yes and one of us says no some we had one female that we were both like mm, i really don't want to do this but um and we ended up doing it for you know the guy was like please you know like i know she's not the best but um you know i'll be responsible with the pups and this that and the third so he actually pet home some of them and then kept um two for himself and um we were like, all right, cool, you know, no problem. But yeah. we talk about things. The biggest thing in, in any type of business deal is, number one, being black and white. Like, I don't have a gray area. Sometimes shit comes out my mouth before I even process it, and then I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that like that. Right. So I don't have a gray area. I talk black and white. Like, this is what it is. This is how I feel. And I don't put emotions into this these decisions. You really gotta go ahead and you know understand that you're doing business here. So don't get sentimental, don't put emotions, be straight up and communicate with each other and it could work because it's one thing that you wanna take all this on by yourself, which anybody that has at least 10 dogs knows that this is really hard to do, you know? But it's it's even more amazing when you get to build a squad. So I got people in Cali. I have people in New York, in New Jersey, uh, Virginia. I have people in Georgia. Um, I have people in Texas now, recently. So it's like, it's more amazing because I do a lot of like mentorship, you know? Yeah. I know the medications. I work for the vet. I also, my father used to breed, so I've had to do a lot of crazy stuff with that and, and then and i'm a nurse so can i can i ask you another question comments real mm -hmm. underscore mvp 352 says can you repo a dog if the co-owner is not producing enough work no that's childish yeah. i'm not a child you have a real conversation with them and you okay, say hey well, you know what maybe maybe hey, what if, you should get to if, a couple shows on, maybe we on, should let me ask you this real quick. Let let me ask you this. Let's just say the that you do a co ownership with somebody, and you said you knew them, but they just started to fall off. They really weren't that interested in doing it. Now they're missing heat. They're not on schedule. You're still, you know, what I'm saying, putting gas in there in, in the tank to keep them going, but they just they just lost okay, all so motivation. I did but they have, don't, they don't want to get. Oh, I did, have, I did have somebody do that, right? Yeah. And I had one more breeding, right? And then finally he came clear to me and said, Jay, it was just too much for me to do the, the whelping. It took a toll on me. Exactly. You know, da, 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 da. I, and, and then let's say, let's say the, the puppies are my growing. Bad. My, my bad. And, and you can't, puppies so, are growing. You just, they can not get rid of them. Like, oh no, I, I sell places, a lot these, of my co own pups. Places with co right. ownership. And, so, and, 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 hold on, real quick. We, I don't think a lot of people understand the fact that this process is a due process. You know what I'm saying? And when I say due, like you have to put in work. And 
not only do you have to put in work, but you got to be considerate at, at, of the, the growth and time that is going in on this co-ownership. A lot of people lose a lot of focus and don't apply the pressure that is needed. So what the, you're saying right now needs to be told to them beforehand. But now there is there is yeah, a part in my contract, right? It's a, it's a okay. paragraph because I make people sign my contract paragraph per paragraph, right? Okay. And the reason okay. I do that is because I want them to actually, and I read it over with them one by one, so they initial every single spot. So if they do not, you know, stick to what the contract says, the dog can be surrendered back over to the original breeding to the original breeder because i have breeder and seller and da 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 and all that stuff in the yeah. the verbiage of the contract so i'm trying to make it not so technical but you'll go ahead and and um re, you know send it back however this they're guy does not want to send dog, the dog. they're not trying to give the dog back though so, so, so now let me works. yeah let me just get to that part so they didn't want to send the dog back they fell in love with the dog all right cool so listen i want to finish off our contract we got one more breeding go ahead and you know let's impregnate her and i will whelp the litter we'll take care of all our stuff and then you're good to go you're done and if you don't want her third litter that's on you okay no problem it's just that you know the this that the whelping okay nope no problem you know like i'm not gonna make a big deal when there's always a solution like there right. is always a solution so pretty much when, when you, you have them, you to, be because to you don't know somebody else's situation. I had a co-owner that hit me up and said, you know what, Jay, I'm in nursing school. I don't even have the money right now. But when we have the litter and we sell the pups, you could take my part of the reproduction stuff from there. I said, cool, no pressure. Here you go. Go get her pregnant. Let's go do this thing. I'll do the AI myself. We're good to go. Um, so I went ahead and did everything, all the whelping, I provided whelping supplies, you know, all the food, all the, all the stuff, my kit, I basically put my kit and I was like, I got you, no pressure. So once pup, he gave me my money and then we moved on to the next. Sometimes, sometimes it's not, everybody's always trying to go to fuck you, you know, like nobody's trying to always screw you over. So sometimes you just got to realize that you're dealing with another human. And if you guys speak on it and be honest with each other, there's always a solution. Always. I respect that. Okay, so I got a question. So now, what if... Okay, what and the co Your co-owner doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to breed or doesn't want to do anything or follow by your rules, but respectfully. And they say, all right, well, fine. Okay. Could you allow them to buy? Um, your depending house? on the female, but if it's not working and shit's not going, but I, yeah, yeah no, if, if it's not working, they won. And, and things are, you might have to take. Because sometimes, like I said, no, everything is working, but they don't want to call on no more. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what if they just say, all right, well, fine. You know what? Like, you know what, Miss J? It's like, I don't really want to, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't really want to. I, I don't feel like breeding. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to. You know, they can buy me out. Have any letters. I don't want to set them. Yeah, but okay, you know that's what, what I was about asking. That sometimes is that that's why I'm like so picky because if it's a female that I know I have such a fucking vision for, <laughs> I'll right. be like, listen here. Either, you know, I'll give them the option. I'll be like, hey, what if I wealth the litter? I do one litter and, you know, we do a one litter and then you pay me out the rest, you know, the other half. Uh, well, the reason the reason why I asked oh, you, you know, you have something. No, there's a lot of people that you know were sold the dream people. and thought that they were going to make trillions and bazillion, bazillion dollars in the dog game on their first litter and all this other shit. I'm realistic. I don't tell anybody right. that shit. I said, this shit's going to be hard work. Blood, sweat, and tears are going to go into what? this. You're going to miss vacations. You can't go more than a weekend nowhere. So, I mean, prepare yourself. So, make sure that right. this is something you actually want to do. This is not play play. These are exactly. little lives that we are that we are bringing mm -hmm. into the world. For sure. And this is not sure. play play in any which way, shape, or form. So, 
get shit together before you Thing know. Is, lady, but but I mean, you know, the reason why I asked that is because you know, like I know things like some people might be adamant. Like, oh well, yeah, you know, uh, I don't want you to breed him respectfully because I don't want him. To oh have, yeah, I yeah to I've I've heard name. that. I don't want him. To but that if that's what was so, spoken on beforehand, and sometimes they kind of mention something like that don't push and try to make that respectfully decline right. selling them your dog or co-owning them the right, dog because right, right. they're just not meant to be right. ready not all mm -hmm. money is worth making right mm -hmm. so i got a quick question right. for you real no. quick. Oh, go ahead go ahead you need go ahead i got i got no, i got, no, a, no, I got good, a question good. for you real quick uh-huh you hear me jay yeah i hear you all right so check as you know, and I, I know you know because this is your dog. How do you feel that the French Bulldog is the number one dog in America? I like it. For real? I, I wish I could say I like <laughs> it, but now everybody really wants to breed Frenchies. And yeah. so from, from a well-being perspective, what I've noticed over the years, because I do talk to a lot of people, I do help people with a lot of like what I call ICU puppies intensive care puppies yeah aspiration pneumonia loss of you know um hip dysplasia spinal um you know compression there's a lot of different that i've, I've dealt with over the years not particularly in my gram i don't know if, if you know but when i first hey, started dog, answer the pandemic bullies question in the comments real quick for me oh, oh what happened <laughs> go ahead go ahead okay hey, we listening I'm so catch the comments so, um, you know, now I'm seeing a lot more health issues in the Frenchies, in Frenchie litters. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Frenchie litters lost, you know, passing away all in all. And I yeah. feel it's just because people are not taking a step back, back and really knowing what they're doing. Like the breed naturally can have a lot of issues. If you breed it correctly, it doesn't have to have those issues. You know what I mean? Um, so they're and they're also bringing a bunch of shit into it, as I mean everybody could see. So they definitely. <laughs> yeah. that's what I thought the problems was from, but I don't know. I could be way wrong. That's what I thought. Yes, the was but you have to understand, Frenchies naturally could have issues. So a natural Frenchie, yeah, For a sure, natural just, Frenchie just like could have right, elongated right. palate, like soft palate, palate, stenotic nares, hip dysplasia, uh -huh. hemi vertebrae. You know, they could already have a lot of that. Now, I know, and I know, and I'm not here to say any names ever because I've known these secrets for maybe eight plus years. Um, I know people that have had famous studs with one nut and have studded out their dogs. I know dogs that had palate injuries and they still studded out their dogs. Instead of being responsible and saying, damn, uh, that palate is going to be passed down to the puppies. That's a $3,000 surgery. Why are you setting up your 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 puppy buyer for something that has to be paid 3000 after purchasing a puppy from you? That person's not going to want to come back to you. So now you're shooting yourself in the foot. Whatever. Right. But And the reason I can say that and I can stand on it is because I purchased a stud for fifteen k right? I bought this boy and I was like, oh man, I'm gonna bring this new jean over here. I'm gonna get me some more colors. Cause when I first started Frenchies guys, there was standard colors and the most exotic color was a blue brindle. <laughs> okay, I got I got a question from CM Bully Live. Hold on, hold on. Let me just finish this train of thought really, really okay. quick and then I'll okay. answer it. Okay. So I got this mail and I was so excited because I'm gonna bring in this chocolate, I'm gonna bring in this trial, we're gonna get this shit going. Guess what? Dog never stopped throwing up. Just threw up all the fucking time. Lost weight, threw up, threw up, threw up, threw up. He needed a palate surgery. He had a soft palate. He had an elongated palate and stenotic nails. That means that the nose holes were closed. Yeah. So it wasn't big enough. I right. asked my vet. He was like, well, try it. I bred him to one of my females, right? I sold those pups to everybody that has purchased a puppy from me before. And they knew off rip, right, that those pups could be prone to having that surgery done. So they bought the dog for me as a pet home. I put away those 4K for each puppies, right, into an escrow account. Just in case any one of those 
buyers needed to get the surgery done, we will take the money out of that escrow account and pay for the surgery. Because I was very upfront with them from the beginning that this is the problem that the dad's having. I just want to test the theory if it's being passed down to the puppies or not, right? Beautiful boy. Guess what? Out of five puppies, four of them needed the surgery. So I said, okay, you're getting your nuts chopped off. And I put him in a pet home. He still lives an amazing life. He lives with the, my mom's neighbor, which is a gamer, which is on his couch all the time. You know, works from home, electronic IT person, whatever. And he's in a great home. He had his surgery. His kids had their surgeries. And I paid for that surgery with the money that they purchased those puppies with. Because I knew what I was doing and I had to be responsible for what is to come after. So... It is what it is. You have to know what the fuck. You know, you have to know what the Yeah, sure. All right, I got a I got a oh dang her phone died. I got a quick question. Okay. She's gonna tap back in. It said from CM Bully Line, he said the question is for all four of you. Where are you trying to go for your individual camps as far as vision? He's asking uh, where, like, where, as far as our vision, where do we see our camps going? Uh, who said that? CM Bully Line. Uh, I, I mean, we could say some basic shit and be like to the top or whatever. But you mean vision wise? When he when he say that, I'm asking him. Do he mean vision wise as far as like what is our overall look of our dog or just the camp in total? Uh, or I'm, like, all right, let, 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 like, let's let's yeah. hold on before we get into that. Let let uh. Let Jay wrap it up for the last uh, ten minutes on the on the Frenchy tip on the cult ship. I got a lot. I don't know if you're looking at the comments, Jay, but it's so many people now that are just now tuning in. For everybody that's tuning in, this, the the Bully I'm Breakfast is Club is powered by the Wolf Pit. Yeah, this is where you get your education at. This is where you get the the raw and uncut, real deal of information that you are looking for pertaining any breed of dogs that you are breeding prefer uh more so the exotics the French you got a French on here. Introduce yourself real quick, Jay, for those that's just now tuning in. Oh hi, uh my name is Jessica. Um I've been breeding Frenchie for a very long time. I've been breeding uh bullies and English bulldogs as well. And I have some to breed, and my father used to breed pit bulls back in the day, back when it was like Razor's yeah. Edge and Gotti Lines and all that shit. So I've been around dogs my so, entire so life. <laughs> to, just to do a quick recap of what you said for the past hour, uh, they want to know, like, what, what, can you give them just a quick contract or what the a part of a contract when it comes to co-ownership now you don't got to go too hard but give them like key points like this 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 and yes it comes with a signature what would it be yes um everything comes with a signature on my contract we discuss about so before you get the call we do discuss what your vision is and what your look that you're going for is because maybe my frenchie is not the style that you're going for and then, you know, I will respectfully decline at that point to do the co-ownership. However, if we find that we're on the same page, we can move forward. Communication is key for me. Um, as far as the co-own, we do split two litters. The third litter is yours. I do um, first pick on the first litter. The co-owner gets second pick and then we sell and split the rest on my second litter they will get first pick i will get second pick and we sell and split the rest i do cover all reproduction fees i do pay half of the stud service if we decide to use um an outside dog um on top of that third litter is theirs in its entirety and i sign over the papers trans uh transfer them over into their name so how do you do your male co-owns? I know that was pretty as, much all. As far as my male co-owns, they will pay half of what the dog, uh, what my asking price is, um, and then we split the um, the people that pay for the for the stud fee. We split it. So if it's five k, it'll be twenty five twenty five. But whoever takes care of the actual, you know, shipping the semen or taking the boy or whatever, you know, 
thing we got to get done to get the breeding done, I normally put an extra five on their side, you know, on their on their half. Um, just because you know, there's transportation, there's gas, there's time, you know, a lot goes into sometimes getting these things done, especially if it's a busy boy. And then the other thing is, as far as my boy co-owns, I'm allowed to use the boy within my camp. They're allowed to use the boy within their camp, and I don't need to be paid anything. However, if one of my co decide to use the boy, they have to pay their part of the study. So if one of my co owns that's not in my camp, they do give a discounted price and pay, you know, some of the stud fee to the per to the person, to the person okay. that I'm co owning with. So I know that sounds confusing, but I just like to make sure that I never feel like I'm taking advantage of anybody. So yeah, I have a bunch of dogs, but I don't want you can use them on all your shit. Like that's not fair. So dogs, I don't have to to pay nothing but anything that's co-owned outside of my house they go ahead and pay a smaller fee but they still pay the fee that's spoken about prior to the to the co-own but they still pay the fee to my co-owner that has that mail so that they still okay. get something out of it you can't you can't you can me there so i'm i'm gonna ask, i'm gonna ask you like this so if i call on the mail with you and I want to use them. Are you saying that I would have to pay your half of the co-own? Is that what you're telling me? No, 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 no. If we co-own a male together, uh -huh. you can use your dog on your dogs in your house okay. as much okay. as you okay. want. Okay. However, I personally, I have a lot of dogs that don't live in my house, right? So, if, so you're saying if I want to come back and use one of your dogs, I would have to pay the other half no, of your co-own? No, me. There. Me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay, me, okay, okay. like if you and I co-own a male, right? Uh -huh. And I want to use the dogs for something that lives under my roof. Uh -huh. That's fine. I could use it. However, if one of my co-owners that own a female with me say, hey, Jay, I really want to use that boy. I would tell my co-owner, that's cool. No pressure. But you need to pay half of the stud fee to my guy that has the boy. To you. For sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Because the dog does not live under my house. Yes, I co-own it. But, you know, so what I do is that that half that they're going to pay to you, I'll pay half, they pay half, and we just go ahead and, you know, take care of that. But I never want my my male owner, right? Because if, mm -hmm. if, honestly, if I started using that male for all my co-owns and my dogs that live in this house, it, it's a lot. You know, you're going to eventually you'll start, you'll start feeling a certain type of way. You know what I mean? Right. So that's why again, there's solutions for everything. So you know what? Make sure that you take care of people just as much you want them to take care of you. So that's a fact. It's a two way street. I'm gonna be honest with you. Everything has a solution. Everything could be talked out. You know, losing puppies isn't easy for anybody at any stage of this game. You know, even I that's been doing this forever still get affected by that shit. So everything can be, you know, talked out. Everything is just a phone call, an honest conversation, a way of creating a solution, to be honest with you. Play Matt, was you going to switch the Go ahead. I, gotta, I ain't going to lie. Go ahead and ask you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we co-own the mill, right? Let's, me and you co-own the mill. I have a female over here that I co-own. How do you how do you go about that? If I want to breed the male to a female that I co-own with somebody else, um, if you want to do that, um, you can. It lives in your house. It lives in my house. I just co-own it with somebody else. That's on you. That's you. That's okay. you. I only talk about the ones that don't live in my house. Okay. Anything okay. that lives in my house, anything that resides at my address. We'll go ahead and I'm sorry. Somebody somebody's messaging me and they're saying stupid shit. <laughs> sorry. Um, I just got a message by the way from one of your people in here that's saying, "Oh, you're so beautiful. Smile." <laughs> like I'm not even on camera. <laughs> um. So so yeah. No, I only speak on the dogs that are in my house. Uh, that I can use the mail at no cost. But anything outside of my house, you know, I, I like to take care of the person that's co-owning that mail with me. Again, it could get intimidating, you know, if I keep using him for outside dogs. 
and now the outside people right that don't live in my house are getting your blood you're, you're gonna feel some type of way so at least i want them to be compensated for it hey that was very informative real talk we got a lot of we got a lot of frenchy breeders on here again this is the bully breakfast club where you come and get that good plate you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of information that a lot of people are pursuing in the game on each lane when it comes to Frenchies and exotics. And, you know, I just want everybody that's in the comments, if you want to engage, we got a question bubble. You are able to request a live and share your thoughts on whatever topic is at hand. This is the Bully Breakfast Club. So just so you guys know on here, um, Platt and I met. But one time she in Georgia, the nice. second time, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> so we met the first time in Georgia, and I'll never forget him because I have gone out and bought a what's that thing called that you wore at the South Whoa. Carolina thing? Oh, the uh, you talking that about you the, the porn? Oh my God! So I found one the other day. And I was like, I want this. And my kids were like, Mom, where the hell are you going to wear that at? And I was like, probably at the next dog show. Stop playing with me. So, <laughs> so I met um, him over at, where was it? Uh, Georgia. And the vibes that he gives off, he's loud as shit. But they're not negative. But he loud. But they're not negative. <laughs> and then I met him. And so where we ended up having to... Um, kind of just finish, finish off the show just to make sure all the trophies oh, got out to everybody. So we had to, uh, I don't know, basically pull the rabbit out the hat on that one. But it got done, and, and everybody was happy that they got their extra nah, stuff. Nah, for real, that, that, right there, that, was the, uh, that was the first Boosie show. It was in South Carolina. And we just had... We had known people to, that show that, that do shows that were just quitting and like everybody was just fed up with what was going on. And, you know, of course me that, you know, I have hosted a couple shows. I just took the, the, the initiative and, you know, took charge and grabbed the mic and we kept the show going. You know, we ran the top, the, we ran the categories. She passed out the trophies. You know, it was just, you know, it's just one of them things, like, you know, when something goes sour, like, are you going to cry about it or are you going to keep it going? And, like, me and her just took charge. So, yeah, we're, we're for We just real, made man. it the so best that of it. Was, that was a moment <laughs> of just dedication to the game and to the people that we really do care about the finances that are put into this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, people, people came travel. from all people over the place traveled. to be there. And people traveled with yeah. XLs. I have an XL. I don't know if you guys have an XL, but it is a bitch to travel no, with them boys. <laughs> so. I don't have, have any, but I know they're 100 and something pounds. 168 pounds of pain in my ass, okay? God damn. Well, that's a child. That's, the, that's more, because I don't even think my 14-year-old weighs that. That's a, that's a, that's a baby man. Yep. A grown man. What's so, let me tell you something. He's huge, and we took him to the wow factor in, um, in PA, and that shit was out this world crazy. Okay? So, people came to that show from all over the place, and we just wanted them to, you know, be able exactly. to get their bang for their buck. And the categories were expensive there. anyway, so we wanted to make sure all the trophies got out. And he didn't have anything to win from it, and I didn't have anything to win from it, and we weren't on live, and we weren't looking for clout. However, we wanted to make sure that, again, the community, yeah. the community is important. It's really important. Well, so we gonna uh, rotate to the next topic. Let them know where to find you, AJ, and and just let them know how you're coming and and what they have to look forward to in the near future with your camp. Well. It's as far as for me, I'm I'm on a quest right now to finish getting my free next AKC championships, and then I'll be a happy person, <laughs> which I already have the females. They're already in play, so I'm excited. Uh, I've already lost. I'm originally family Frenchies. Then I was Endgame Frenchies. Now it's Yesika at Endgame Frenchies. 
you can go ahead and follow me. Feel free to ask me questions, guys. Um, I do answer. Just don't get mad at me if I don't answer, like, right, right, right away. I will get to it, I promise. Um, I'm also a nurse. I work 12-hour shifts. So you got to keep that in mind. I also have a real estate business. So I'm a busy person, but I do get to my messages. And um, hey, have you an too. amazing Appreciate day, guys. Appreciate you jumping on the Food <laughs> Breakfast Club again. Right. This is Monday through Friday, 9, Thank to 11, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Thank you so much Appreciate for having you me, guys. Have a, great have, great day. have a great day. All right, y'all, man. It's going down for everybody tuned in. This is the Bully Breakfast Club. This is where you get your plate before it's too late. We need. Uh, we got a lot of new breeders. We got a lot of that's thinking about getting into dog breeding. And this is just where you will come to get all the raw game. Any question that you got, you got a question bubble right there. We go through the questions. We comb through the comments. If you want to get on the live and state your opinion, you know everybody has a different perspective of whatever the topic at hand is. But let us let's let's go. Unique, what's going on, man? What's the next topic today, brother? Uh, go give him a commercial. Say it again. Yeah. Somebody, somebody in the comments, so they want to break. <laughs> Today, all right. I got oh, okay. Look, this is the commercial break. So, as y'all know, we got three active Wolf Pit members on here. The Bully Breakfast Club is powered by the Wolf Pit. So, this is what we're doing for the community, okay? This is one of the dog groups that are highly respected, uh, booked for shows engaging with the community on a whole different level never done before and a lot of people are interested but all, on the contrary there's a lot of people that don't really know about it so i'm gonna uh tag the wolf pit page okay so what we're doing as a whole is simply this everybody go follow the wolf pit page i just pinned it everybody go follow the wolf pit page but here's the catch Everybody that reposts their favorite post in the in the Wolf Pit on the Wolf Pit page and tags the Wolf Pit and says done within the DM is going to be added to it to get a hundred dollars. So we will be doing a drawing. Anybody that reposts, you gotta follow the page, you gotta repost your favorite post and then hit done or type done whenever you're finished. And then you will be entered in a drawing to win a hundred dollars cash app, of course. So everybody definitely take heed, take advantage of it. Go follow that page right now. You know what I'm saying? Like this is it's going down this Are you asking them to tag you in No, I'm saying in, in the tag, post tag the wolf pit. The pit now page? if you do if you do the, yep, the, yep, the yep, page yep. is right here, it's pinned. If you do know a few of the wolf pit members it's 30 it's 32 of us right it's like 32 of us so you, you uh i'm like that like got a favorite wolf pit member you could tag them or whatever but just to get people up to speed with what the wolf pit is man we're just uh one of the top dog groups in the game man that really put on for the community really put on at shows and just give y'all whenever we are in the building Phenomenal dogs. We got members with, with movement. history, and we got members that will just give you a, a whole new, you know, insight when it comes to dogs. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that everybody right now goes and follows the Wolf Pit page. Get familiar with us, and you know what I'm saying? We gonna eat straight like that. All right. So let's get to the next question, right. man. We we had it from. CM Bully Line, he says, where are y'all trying to go for your individual camps as far as vision? I'll go uh, if y'all want me to. Uh, the, that puppy, that was Love yeah. Bone. She's on my page. You'll see her. She's real. Like, she looked like a little stud. She got her ears. She got the ears. She got the rabbit ears. That was Love Bone. <laughs> She's looking good. But go ahead, uh, Mo. My fault. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, individually, bro, I'm for real, for real, just trying to outdo um, 
I try to outdo myself every time. You know what I'm saying? Um, individually. Um, I really want to take the stud I have, which is pop, and make what I what I think is the next best pop. You know what I'm saying? Um, really just improve my, my dogs one at a time. You know, as we all know, ain't no ain't no perfect dog. So I might get a dog with the front and the head I want, but it might have be lacking in the rear, or I'm it might be lacking in angulation, or it might not have a tail or something like that. So individually, I'm just trying to improve what I got okay. going on on my yard. Uh, I got a question real quick from uh. Biggie 0378. What do you guys give your Frenchie or dog if they eat poop? A quick trip to the vet, because that is not what's up. Oh? Yeah, he, he said, what do you got what do you guys do for your dogs that's eating his species? That's not good, bro. Oh uh yeah, yeah they probably got worms. You don't want to take them. You don't want to uh, have watch them and watch them eat it. But they got some pills you can go buy yeah, or whatever. Or vet can, yeah, take I mean, to the vet. Yeah, I'm a vet. I'm going to run to the uh, vet. She says pineapple juice in the food. Try that. Uh, next question. So, so right. do y'all really right. love dogs or y'all just like the money? This comes from the best bully camp underscore CEO. No. I, I, I'm really a dog, the dog whisperer, straight up. Yeah. And I've heard this from a lot of breeders. They'll sit back and be like, bro, before I try to press for some teas, like, I will give the dog away. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that that's Facts. just a real deal breeder for you, like. Now, don't get me wrong. There are opportunists out there. They don't care nothing about a dog. They don't want to deal with the dog. They don't want to do nothing that I do right. when it comes to this dog movement at all. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm not going to say there's people out there that are solely about the dogs, but they're definitely solely about, I, I, I just want the money. But, again, a lot of people say, if you ain't in it for the money, then what you in it for? You know what I'm saying? But... As a as yeah. a dog breeder, like a real dog breeder, bro, like I, they always say, like do what you love, and you won't be working. Straight, and you won't be working. Yeah, I feel, I feel like uh, anybody who lie and say they're not in it for the money is a fucking lie. Because whether you saying I'm only breeding to take care of my dogs, or I'm only selling this pup to so I got vet bill money, or whatever it is, you need the money to go to the vet. You need the money to pay for the dog. You need the money to do anything so in a certain aspect we all bring sure. money you know what i'm saying for sure right so don't tell y'all right. different man uh yeah next question uh good morning fellas got some hung papers any suggestions by the dog with papers but not legit oh uh no you could, dog start over. you could you could hold you could, you could Hold up, 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 hold up. Okay. I, I might have a solution. So, uh, good, good again? morning, fellas. Got some hung papers. Any suggestions? But tell them to tap in. Tell them to tap in. Let me see if you feel all Because I, 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 I'll tell. Him I don't think he's on here no more. What's the name? I C I C three. What? Can y'all see the question? IC three uh, twenty three LC. No. Let me see if it's L. Are you gonna single register? Unique. Yep. It says yeah. everybody. The, I mean, shit. It's the only thing you can do. Hold on. Do you have yeah. one above it? Do y'all feel like we sustain a lot of people through the info shared on the lives? I mean. I mean what do y'all feel, feel like we sustain a lot of people through the info shared on these lives, shared on the lives? I mean, I think so. Let me see. Cookie factor. I definitely. Oh, I'll understand the question. I'm like, basically, like, what he's saying is, is like, 
from all the lives, do you feel like people has learned a lot? Do you feel like people has actually Hell, I, I def- Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I definitely feel Hell, like yeah. we reach out to people, man, and it's a lot of people that, you know, don't really have anybody to go to. You know, a lot of people are really to themselves and, and won't ex- explain what they're going through or even ask a question. So just think about it. Like, for instance, we got people that support us, never engage with us. We don't know why they don't engage, but some of the times we ultimately think, oh, they just, they lurking. You know what I'm saying? But it could be a person that's simply not very, ver- not good at being verbal or outspoken. Yeah. yeah. And are really, or so sure you know, taking that. up games. So this platform is for those individuals because it's a lot of people on here that's engaging, asking questions that have never even DM'd any of us. You know what I'm saying? So they actually see what we do every morning and who we bring on. Not just us, but we respected breeders. Not just one breed of a of, of, of one breeder of a particular breed, but different types of dogs. You know what I'm saying? So it's definitely yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's, de- it's definitely you know, saying, you know, know people are are leaving here learning something that they never knew today for sure, and that's every day. He says. As long as you the, come the and real underscore money. MVP says, "What is the best kennel, or not? Not the kennel club, but he's saying, what's the best kennel club to register your dogs with? I'm IBKC, and I don't like them. So, what's the best registry? I got, I, like I got ABR. a few. Yep, I got, I got a few ABR. I got." UKC, uh, when I was doing pockets, AKC, I mean, ABKC, uh, USBR, I think I already said that, BRC, like, these, these is, all that was when I first started, though. But let, let me get back to Burners. He said, I feel like that's why the market is down for a lot of people. A lot are learning that don't deserve to be sustained, is my point. Well, why don't you get on the live, bro, and, and talk to us? Yeah, and then, and then, too, even with that being said, only way somebody's going to learn is if you teach them. You never want to keep nobody beneath you or, or in a in a in an ignorant state if you can help educate them. You know what I'm saying? That ain't going to do you no good, nor yeah. them. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. My, that's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. No, I, what, I mean. What's going on, <laughs> Cookie Factory? Introduce yourself. Let them know who you represent, where you come from. What's good, bro? It's, it's Cookie Factory, man. We down south. We in Arkansas, 45 minutes outside Memphis. Uh, okay. So what I was saying was not saying that y'all doing something wrong. You feel what I'm saying? Because I y'all talking good shit. It was just a question and an observation that okay. a lot of people in this game that come through the lives, like, they're sustained through the information that we share through the live. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. And a lot of the people in this game, we all know, they not even dog people. They not in it for the dogs. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't think we realize how we've created a lot of the drama and shit on ourselves. Because we sustain a lot of people in this dog game that don't deserve to be in here. If you can't go to the person you bought your dog from and get info, then what are we doing? You feel what I'm saying? I ain't well, ask, ask, my dog ask, from a person that I can't part. go talk to them about how to breed it, stuff like that. Ask the info, last. medication, different stuff. You know what I mean? Like the the you have people jump on the live, they want to know, okay, so they still at the base point. So, okay, so what do I give my dog you didn't bred the dog you didn't did all of this shit and you don't even know what kind of mush you're gonna get the dogs and stuff like that like those kind of things not saying that somebody's wrong for giving the info mm-hmm. but we sustain a lot of bullshit mm-hmm. in our community by being people that give that free game like that not saying you're supposed to charge somebody either, but do you see like the, the kind of give and take of that I mean, I see what you're saying, but at the end of the day, bro, 
I always say this. If you got motion, it, it really doesn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? If you, I, mean, I know what you're saying. Basically, play with the, game, play the game with is to be sold and not told. Basically, when you, what, when you say motion, what you mean by by motion? So to me don't with, got with, nothing to it, do with the info. No, when I say motion, because basically what you you saying is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you saying the game is to be sold, not told. Okay, but but let's just say no, nope. we are We're not necessarily one. saying that. I'm saying. Okay. You're supposed to get your, your game from a person that you get close to and you uh and groom you. You feel how y'all got the wolf pit? How y'all got people? You're supposed to get the game from your mid to your own different breeders. Y'all not grooming each other on live. Y'all grooming each other through y'all own little methods and how y'all communicate. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, so you feel like we groom each other outside of the live. 100 percent you feel what i'm saying okay so what would you call the live then what, what would you call us doing this right here then oh you you're grooming other people outside of your group right okay but you just said you want to get close to somebody and basically you're going to confide in them when it comes to you breeding correct so that would be your mentor correct. so let's just say let's say this it's 90 it's 99 people on here uh-huh out of all these 99, let's just say it's 100. You got a quarter, I got a quarter, Unique got a quarter, Mo got a quarter. Uh -huh. All these people are about to gravitate to us and get closer to us because what? We're informative. Not only are we informative, but we got the work, the, the, the paper trail behind us, the, our work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So not, I don't feel like anybody is going to sit back and confide into somebody that can't show no proof of work. Black Diamond, you know what I'm saying? Diamond kind of see Black Diamond kind of see what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's anybody's fault. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, I think we sustain just like I was saying at first. I think okay. we sustain a lot of people in this game because we we are so open and want to be yes, open with yes. the information. Is that one hundred percent? And you feel like they don't put the, the that work in that they should prior to asking the question? One hundred percent. Okay. So we sustain because them, we, and they pretty, don't pretty much you said they don't, you feel they don't ask questions I, because see what you're saying. I I nevertheless like even people that I've done business with, they know I'm here, but I'm not about to do everything for you. Right. You right. Know what I'm saying. Right. Even even let's just talk about the pit. We got all these members. But we all got different parts to play, and we got to exercise that part. I can't do what he does, or they can't do what I do. They got their role, and they execute that. You know what I'm saying? Correct. But when it all comes together, we all eat. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I 100% agree that anybody that's going to engage in anything definitely has to pull their weight. And I feel you like do a little like, homework, at least. Yeah, for sure. Like I don't feel like. I mean, just think about. It. Let's just say hypothetically, and this isn't the fact, but let's just say we weren't stand-up breeders, and we on here acting, and now we just cold mm -hmm. misled you, and your whole program failed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get what you're saying. So yes, I think it's I think it's super important to always. Do your own research. I, te I tell people all the time because I'm pretty sure like you, like Unique, like Mo, y'all get a lot of questions every day. What do you think I should do about this? What do you think I should do about that? And the first thing I say, hey, well, I mean, you could always Google it because yeah. there's, no, there's, there's nothing better than to educate yourself. You know well, what I'm saying? Let me ask you this. Do you get the response that that's, that's kind of like – do you feel like you saying Google it, it goes against the grain in today's world? Uh, uh, I feel like some people will be like, all right, I'm all right, and they'll go to the next person. But at the end of the day, if I say Google it and, and, and follow that with, you know, there's nothing more important than self-help or self-education, a couple remedies. But let's just say the remedy that I choose it's not what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because a lot of people be like, uh, 
Oh, I want to learn how to tool feed, but I don't want to kill it. Well, I'll tell you how to do it, but this is the risk you're taking. That might scare a person off. Right. So, I know what you're saying. Let me go ahead and mm-hmm. do it this mm-hmm. way. And I always be like, look, if you don't know how to do it, like I can not I can show you, but go to your vet, have them show you. And also, you can watch tutorials on YouTube. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. YouTube, on YouTube, yeah, that's my answer. I don't never nah, know. for real. I'm a YouTube dude. So that's, that's the only thing I was saying. I, I was just asking, do you feel like, you know, a lot of the lives that go on with all the info, the good dog talk info, do yeah. you feel like it sustain a lot of people in this community that don't deserve to be in this motherfucker? Uh, now, I don't, what do you mean, like, don't deserve to be in the community? Because are, are you saying like, because they're not dedicated and yes. willing? Learn for they don't give a fuck about the dog. So they hear yeah, for the money. You, they you feel what I'm saying? That. Like that's what I'm saying. We sustain a lot more people than our actual dog men in this community. We I, sustain I mean, a at lot more. The day, bro, they, let's just say this though. They ask us questions. I don't think the questions stop there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One hundred percent. And I'm just being real. Like I don't think the questions is gonna stop because. If you're not trying to learn on your own, and let's just say you ask me a question, I tell you, but you like, well, let me go to Unique real quick and ask him to see if he say the same shit. And he don't. So then you go to Mo, and he don't say nothing that we just said. Like, you, the questions is going to still keep going, but it's going to be somebody that persuades them and let's just say they didn't know what they was doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Who's really getting played? You playing yourself, not trying to educate yourself on something that you mm-hmm. engage in. Mm-hmm. And then at then at the end of the day, all that shit gonna weed itself out. They might have a good That's year run, a say. year or two run. That's they gonna weed themselves out eventually because this ain't what they're this ain't what they love. They not invested. This ain't what they 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 actually interested in doing. You know what I'm right. saying? Uh, in, right. Rack runner underscore bully says, "How y'all know? Me personally, I do a lot of research on the internet, bro. And experience. like, I, I just feel, I, I feel, I tell everybody all the time, man. Like, that is like, you know how y'all how we used to be in school, and they'd be like, we got an open book test, and, it's and a, a person, open book cold, test. Mm-hmm. a person cold field." They got an X, and it was an open book. <laughs> the internet is the open book. You it's going to say right. everything. You, you can say, mm-hmm. you can you can talk to your phone. You can say a name, talk to your phone, and they gonna tell you the answer. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, like yeah. you got so they many say- tools that you can use and utilize for for yourself, gain yourself knowledge, and then you can you practice that. And your results is either going to score, you're going to score, or you're going to fail, but you're going to go back and, and get back in that open book like, damn, well, where did I misread it? You feel me? Yep. Like, you just going to do that. Yeah. And then, too, I'm a, I'm a person that I've been having dogs and fucking with dogs. My people used to fight dogs, so I know how to do a lot of shit, whether it's home remedies on Parvo, whether it's how to stitch up something or something like that. But I'm the type of person, I'm going to go ask Playman, I'm going to ask Unique. I'm going to ask Cookie Factory. I'm going to ask Mano. I'm going to ask this person. Then I'm going to take my natural experience yep. and, t- and see what the answer Fact. I okay. come up with together. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? But you yeah. already have your own uh, hypothesis on what, what's going for on. For sure. Right. For sure. It, well, for sure. Even when I'm asking you, I damn near think I know what's yeah. going on. I really want to yeah. get yeah. an opinion. But, you that, know what I'm that, saying? Like what bro was saying, they don't even try to exercise that. They going to do what? They, I'm going to get on this I, bitch I, and I'm they going to listen. I'm a, I'm going to cast somebody out real quick to do it for me. And they didn't know what they was doing. They wanted some money. Yeah. They was on the same type of time as you. So it, it's, it's you feel me? Like, that's when it's I, I say don't deserve it. That's what I mean when I say yeah, don't it, like, it, They ain't it, even trying to put in no effort. They just kind of leaning on the next person every single time for info. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying 100%. You or know tapping what I'm saying? into the live would, when you got a live in the question box and you got it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just whatever they got going on at the moment, they're going to hit the question box versus trying to, let me see if what I, I can find out. And then let me go see if what I found out match up with what one of these people tell me on the back line when I ask them. No. Nah, 
Uh, it, you and you a hundred percent, but let's just say now one of them pe people that you ask can pull up and, and demonstrate. You feel me? Right. So like it, it again, people tell them tell them how you feel, bro. Tell them, tell them, burn like tell them exactly what you trying to say. I, I feel like uh, this community that we have it only it will only elevate if we do more research ourselves and not depend on, you know what I mean, the word of somebody else. Without doing your own research, without trying to figure it out on your own first, like what are you really, what knowledge are you really gaining? You just getting past info. That's just like the hung paper shit. A nigga gonna sell you the poem that the person before him sold him. <laughs> 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 now, for real though, I, I, and one thing that I want to include with what bro just said, bro, people, do your own research. Like, it's not going to hurt nothing. Shit, I, shit I, ain't going to take I, five I, I, minutes. I, I, go ahead. I said shit, it ain't going to take five minutes to hit the, hit the Google and ask the question. It, it ain't. I'm telling you, like, even, like, okay, let's just say this. I sell a lot of raw meat for a dog's diet. The first thing that person's gonna ask me something if i am not on game like this and i got this product that i'm selling and i can't tell you nothing about it do you think they're gonna buy it mm. they not gonna buy it you got a dog you can't even tell me what shots to give a dog but you got dogs He's about it. okay that's I, I get i get what you're saying burning <laughs> like that that was a a very strong topic to talk about because a lot of people do not want to put in forth effort. And then one of my homies in the lot on the comments said, but you're asking the phone, you're asking the phone how to, the phone ain't never dropped puppies or well puppies. You absolutely right, bro. So therefore you got to comb through these breeders, see who's really a breeder and not just a dude or a woman that got dogs for sale. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's, right. it's a huge difference. It's a big, big ass difference. Mm. So yeah, he said ballistic underscore label says learning involves asking questions and building. Absolutely. And remember this too, y'all. There ain't nothing weak or soft about asking for help at all. Yeah, no. I always was told, ain't no dumb questions. Mid Midtown, Midtown Bulls said teachers don't stop teaching because some students don't belong. Right. I, I, I disagree because right so now the kids are way dumber than what we were. <laughs> they they, they, they stop teaching they because they got to fucking control the book. The bullshit is in the class. Unique, <laughs> unique underscore Frenchie underscore Empire says so by getting on live and asking questions, isn't trying isn't that trying to learn? Not saying that that's not trying to learn. <laughs> he said he said do do some more research outside yeah, of the live. What, is what he said. So coming to the live specifically only to take because, this info. He ain't saying that. One hundred. Am I right, right, Cookie? But but this is what happened. This is what's right. happening to him, Mo. He got hella people asking him questions, and he looking. And he don't see no work. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> he get <getting> irritated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what's going on, bro. Getting flooded. Hey, but I'm I'm not trying to say this I, I, in no type of. And that ain't a bad thing because you know, not yeah. to cut you off. That ain't bad because obviously you looking for information. But right. you looking for information and you ain't did right. no kind of research with the questions that you asked. <laughs> no, but look, I'm not trying to discourage nobody, bro. But there was a point, and I promise you, bro, it irritated my soul because I do do the work. I do do the studying. But it's like everybody would come over here and get they, 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 they plate, but take it over here and let them put the food on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That right here, you just hate me. And it got to the point like, look, you 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 can't ask it. That's what I was saying. You can't ask a question unless you invest it. Like that's what I used to say. And a lot of people was like, damn, all right. 
and and you and it stops. You know what I'm saying? But then people started coming through, started investing. Now they, I don't care if you buy a shot of dewormer. You've invested. Yep. So you are unlimited. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to my income. Right. You are. Mm -hmm. So keep that in yep. mind too, mm -hmm. y'all. It's a lot of people out here about their business. They not trying to just give you a plate and then you run the old country buffet and put a whole bunch of bullshit on there. We was at the five-star restaurant and you just, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just real. It's real, y'all. Like a lot of people really do put in a lot of time when it comes to this shit, man. But shit, tell them where you coming from, Burner, bro. I appreciate you jumping on with that topic this morning, man. I appreciate y'all, bro. Let me talk on. Just tap in a little bit, man. We down here in the south, like I said, we right here outside of Memphis. We in Arkansas, man, holding down the cookie factory. Y'all boy, be safe, man. Good hearing y'all chop it up with y'all. But, but, but hold on, real quick. What do they got to look forward to coming from your camp, real quick? Uh, we. We lilac tries. We don't do nothing but do colors, man. Lilac tries, chocolate tries. Uh, we got two times burner dropping. We got, uh, I have three times burner dropping in the next couple months. Uh, okay, then. Yeah, burning my oh, stud. Burn, burner your stud. Burner's my key stud. Okay. I got a little sensei okay, boy, but okay. burner the face of my brain. Yes, sir. Well, appreciate you jumping on, man. Let them know where to find that information at in the morning, bro. Step in on Cooking Factory, and you already know if you're hitting it and you need that good info, hit on the Bullet Breakfast Club with these boys. Yes, sir. Man, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate y'all. Have a good day, brother. Appreciate you too, bro. That that was that was a oh. good uh a good topic, man. We got I misinterpreted that whole fucking question. Say it again. No, I said I had misinterpreted that question the whole I mean, fucking round. Y'all share the line. Hey, hey uh, Frank, run the bullies, man. Introduce yourself. Let them know where you're coming from, who you represent. What up, y'all? He's Rack run the bullies. You know, I'm from Louisiana, Baton Rouge. You know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. I'm in the building tap in with y'all every morning. I hop on here. Yes, sir. Hey, bro. Check y'all out. You no, already before, know that. Up, before you get engaged, is the house clear, bro? Yeah, you definitely. Got a whole situation last time you was on this <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, bro. Hey, I, I remember, bro. That was that was my bad, bro. You, you know, it get heated sometimes. You know how that shit be, bro. bro. Most definitely. Bro, I, I apologize, it's though. I interrupted. I interrupted the bully breakfast. You know, my bad. I, I, I apologize to everybody. Nah, you good, bro. What's, what's going on? What's on your mind, uh, you, bro? Yeah, I was just tapping in. I, whatever subject I had, you know, I was just trying to. Time me and get my input on these sheets. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. That's amazing. I got a question for you, bro. Now, I know you study these dogs. You Big study care. bloodlines here in the States. If you could go anywhere in the world to grab something from their dog community, where would you go? I'd probably go to China. Why China? Why you go where? I don't know. It's some boat. I don't know. I like that. I like the, I like China dogs. I follow them. I follow them. I follow some of them breeders. They got they got some shit. I mean, but what is it that you like? What like when you would go? Like, what is it that you are looking to bring back to the states? Are you just going there to be like, oh, this is from China, or no? I'm she no. If, if I do, it's gonna be a small a small ass bitch, a crazy. Okay. There's a crazy ass female. I ain't really trying to go get no meal or nothing like that. I ain't really into like trying to buy no steel or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless he gonna be crazy. Unless he gonna be crazy because I could I could breed him and, and create a steel. You know you could motherfucker make steel in their first litter. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, like that ain't that hard. That's a good one. I know where. I'm where going. where would you go? You need. France, that's some shit. Going to France, so I'm fucking with one kennel. You talk, and and shit. Oh yeah, little yeah. freaks kennel. Freak. I follow, I follow little freaks. They, they got, got this shit. Little freak, little freak. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to you, France. Bro. Okay, so so. Yeah, somebody in the comments they say China I, I come over here for their dogs. They come over here for them and then they make crazy shit. 
Yeah, I, I, I would go to Felicia. Well, Bully, I think she in Canada. And then I'm just talking about, we talking about going yeah. outside the state. Be honest, I probably would stay in the states if, 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 I would stay in the country, states. Country. If you ask me if yeah. I would go yeah. out the country. Yeah, I'll stay in the state Canada. too. Yeah, yeah I'll stay in the yeah. states too first. That ain't going to be my first choice to go out the country. But like he said, out the country, I'm going to China. That's just me. I'm going to France. No, I think Felicia in Brazil. Yeah, I'm going to France, bro. Because I've watched Felicia, Felicia I, in Brazil. I've, I've watched their program. You know what I'm saying? Like I've literally watched their program. If a lot of people don't know who they are or whatever, they had the freaking uh yeah, be, what's uh, yeah, Beatrice, Beatrice, uh, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. They got they got that crazy shit. They got crazy Boy. shit. Like they done made so many dogs that sent a lot of people's pets today that a lot of people probably yeah, I'm gonna definitely follow a little freak you know. Nah, look, like, I, I fuck with little freaks too, but there's so many, there's so many out the country, yeah, breeders they they that's clowning, like, bro. I'm not gonna stun, bro. Like, I don't have a particular uh, one stop shop, so but I definitely want to go on tour, bro. Like, I really okay. want to go on an out, outside, outside the country tour and and hit. Uh, the the uh the Philippines, China, uh, Texas bread bully. France. China got the crazy nanos. I want to go to the UK. Tell me. Uh, like all this shit, like, bro, it's 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 beyond us, man. Yeah, it's, it's the culture it's us. and it's, the community is crazy. Are way different. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's bigger than just us with that shit. I ain't lying. Like even. Even with the like, even with the pot, y'all know I like all dogs, but I know the UK is huge on pocket bullies, man, and they love Big Bell. They the, and I don't know if y'all are familiar, but in the UK and in a lot of countries, they're not allowed to chop on the dogs' ears or nothing. But you right. see be some some beautiful mm -hmm. and handsome dogs that are just man, man bro, you would just be like, damn, and it ain't even here. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's one thing as a dog breeder, man. Like I'm so open to expanding my horizons with this shit, man. Cause we definitely got a support in the UK. Uh, you know, it's, it, we've we've had a, a few foreign people jump on our lives before. Not this particular uh, morning show, but just over the over the course of years, like we've really with the UK tap in. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Conan Child. He was, you know, on on the live with Korea. You know, he was the person that had me on live with people in Korea. You know what I'm saying? And like, bro, they just, they're just rocking with us, bro. Like for real though. So I definitely oh, yeah, you talking about going. I went, um, I, I think I was on the live when the dog the dog he about to get the dude yep. who got that dog. Yeah, yep. I was on the live. Shit, I was on here. Yep. Yeah. I was watching. Hey, uh, hey, hey, fellas. I'm about to tap out, man. Hey, man, shout out to the Bully Breakfast Club with Play Mad and Unique, man. Every morning, 9 to 11, man. Y'all tap in. It's the only place you're going to come get you some uh, free game. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, play, play, for man. sure, man. Oh. Play. But straight up, Mo. Appreciate you jumping on this morning. I, I actually, I actually, I'm uh, oh, Golden Child is about to tap in, man. And. I'm, I'm like, bro, when I tell you, I be talking to bro all the time, like, yeah, we really about to go on tour, man, like, and and go hit these different countries and see what's going on. Oh, no. oh so you just going to leave me out of it? Nah, I, 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 sure, too, bro. Man. Hey, I think, it, I think it'll be, <laughs> I think it'll be a great thing, bro, for us to all get together and go on a tour. Yeah, that'll be crazy, like, for bro. Real. Yeah, bro, do you know like the history we gonna make, bro, by really rubbing shoulders with these foreigners that already know who we are in a whole different country? I don't like, think bro, no shit like that ever been done anyway, play man. Ain't no shit like that been done. Like nobody. exactly. That's no, yeah. no, no, they have. No, 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 like like five six five six saying, seven breeders going oh, to just them them two I know them two uh Nate Nate Hernandez with Drift's line 
familiar with this. Oh, I, I know Daquan, I know Gator is, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I'm talking more of our, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a, I got something else that I want to talk to you about too. You, uh, to everybody, to our generation. Hold on, yeah. To everybody, my bad, my bad, my bad. So look, man, check this out. A lot of people. People asking, and it'll, it'll be a lot of older people. You know what I'm saying? Older than me. Now I'm I'm 33. So, I'm in the game. I know a little bit of history, but I don't know a lot. You know what I'm saying? But I know what's current. You know what I'm saying? What's going on from like three years ago up till now? You feel me? So when people right. sit back and ask, like, what are your favorite bloodlines? Who are your favorite stud overall and shit like that? Like. Me personally, bro, I'm not so quick to say something that I've never used or really even looked towards, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know if a lot of people yeah. feel like this, but that, it just sometimes it comes down to me like, you know how it's a, a lot of younger artists and they the, like the hip hop culture, which dog culture, like, again, how we was just talking about studying, like it's important to know our history. But they'll ask them, well, what you think about Biggie and Tupac? And they be like, who? You know, and not even know, you feel me? So again, are y'all the type of people like, you know what I'm saying? Do you, I ain't gonna say, do you think it's necessary? Cause I think it's necessary, but I don't really put a lot of energy to it. But do you feel like it's extra, like super, like necessary to know all history? Of where it started at. Oh, some shit. Cause uh, oh, some shit. Uh, I, I feel oh, like some shit. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, not 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 far and going back to like notorious Juan Gotti and all that shit. Though you ain't got to go back that far. To like you know what I'm saying? Like, like just, just I start with it. I mean, huh? yeah, but that's the thing, though. Like, so I, I see a lot of people who get stumped. You know what I'm saying? They get they get stuck and don't even really know what to say. You know what I'm saying? Or don't know who is who. Because I'll be the first to tell y'all, bro. Three years ago, I did not know nothing about an underground dog community where it was going down. And I did not know nothing about that. You and I've been like about what? Like just how there's underground dog shows like of course you see the dog shows on tv oh, and right. stuff like that right 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 but right, i right. didn't know like we could go to a show and then people pulling up with their dogs stacking and stack tables yeah, me, and me, i didn't know me, nothing about me i ain't know nothing like i just went to the jungle i ain't know nothing about the jungle re oh, not too long ago i just in that motherfucker i ain't know nothing about that shit recently like like two years ago right right and that's why i'm I ain't saying know nothing about that. we'll sit back and Ask like, well, what do you think about, about these bloodlines? What's your overall best bloodlines? And, bro, I'm going to say what I know from three years ago on up to today. And, you know, of course, I, you know, just chop it up with OG breeders and just try to get, like, we're going right, back to the it. roots. You know what I'm saying? But nine times out ten chances, nine, nine time, nine time chances, when you got someone that's a little bit more experienced than you, yeah. They gonna know who you talking about, you know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna run into that era of what so out of curiosity, yeah. what is that bloodline that you been know that been putting it down? Right. You I'm not. Talk, right. Nigga, you, you ain't no told Tip, me. Again. You, hey, 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 you gotta stand hey, there. You pushing them. You hey, gotta know the blood. Like this, just come on now. Hey, 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 rack runner, real quick, bro. Let them know where to uh, find you at. I got somebody, uh, OG breeder, that's about to run it down to us real quick. Man, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you know, I'm in the South Rack, run the bullet. Y'all give me a follow. You know, I be, I follow people. I follow Buku Breeders, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm real nigga, I ain't do no, you know what I'm saying? Follow me. I fuck with everybody. For sure. Bro, I appreciate you jumping on the Bully Breakfast Club this morning, bro. Yeah. All right, no, appreciate it, bro. I no problem, man. All right, so I got, uh, I got another, I got another, uh, go ahead and uh, hit the X for me, brother. I got, you, I, got a, I got another uh dog breeder, a wolf pit member, who's in generations, man, and like the history behind it is just phenomenal. But I was listening to bro last night and didn't know 
a lot of dogs he was even, you know what I'm saying, speak or the bloodlines he was speaking on. Now, I haven't heard the name before, but I never really took the time to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. really engage and go and right. research these dogs. So you say he, 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 he's putting you down or he's putting you on game? Uh, uh, I mean, man, he, he was just very informative on his generations last night during his meeting. You know what I'm saying? Or interview, I should say, not as me. And I want to say what 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 he say he was uh eleven on his eleventh or twelfth generation or something like that. Unique. I ain't getting what man. I'm to go At that point, you were in control. You were in control of your your yard. Then eleven years. Then yeah, you were control exactly. every block, everything. You should know. Mm -hmm. There he is. What's going on, Black Diamond? What's going on, bro? Bro. What's so, up? Uh, what's, what's going on? on bro? I had just I had just asked the question as far as uh a lot of people like you like I ain't saying you was asked this last night, but a lot of people are asked like what's your favorite overall bloodlines? And me personally, like I know about dogs, I know about what I've been uh <clears throat> subjected to for the past three years so that's like where i would start now i know there are bloodlines that really jumped it off years ago and so do you feel like it's necessary to go back to your roots when it comes to dog breeding just to figure out or just find out where it all started from or would you not really you know not not just overlook the breeder but would you encourage him to find his roots or would you all right, pat him on his back for what he's learned over the last three years of what's current? Um, well, honestly, the, the main the main thing, bro, it, it goes back to what y'all was talking about earlier. Um, finding a mentor that is um, educated with breeding in the past. So it, it's not really about it's not really about learning all the dogs and the bloodlines in the past but when you have an og that been breeding and could tell you like about i'm gonna go back to um the dex era i'm not gonna go too far back like when you when you say all right how dex bloodline worked then you had um a phenom which, which phenom was one of the ugliest mm -hmm. dogs in that litter but how he was bred everybody knew that when he when the dude got him, he knew all right, he could be ugly right now, but I know how he bred. I'ma hold on to this dog to see then boom. When he hit like a year, year uh, about a year, he was just phenomenal and he was one of the best producing dogs. So it's not about it's not about learning too much of the back history of the bloodlines. It's about learning the experience of these of these older breeders. Because the older breeders could tell you how to um how to go bit by bit like even with gang dogs that's why i'm so big on traits and building from the ground up because back in the day my dad used to tell me man the best way to do it find this blood and i didn't know nothing about bloods but it's the breakdown of how you breathe find this blood this good blood gonna bite hard then you take that blood and you go to this blood this blood gonna have the agility to keep going during the fight then, then you find this blood because this blood is more smarter and know how to train it where it's going to attack how you want it to attack. So it's all about finding an OG breeder and somebody that is knowledge of the game because somebody who coming in right now not going to have the experience of knowing how to put these dogs together. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's really not about knowing the um, blood of the back history. It's knowing what that person know how to put put these things together you know what i'm saying mm. you gotta know the blood mm. too though well no well you we know you know when they when they have to get money they gonna put whatever i tell you whatever just you know what i'm saying to be proper especially when they got that pretty dog they might got something wrong with them or something like that Still, well well like, like i say like i say it's, it's definitely about knowing the blood. It's definitely about knowing the blood. But he asked about about um, knowing all the stuff 
doing the background. The back the background, I could come in I could come in not know, knowing the bloods, but if you don't know how to put it together, that's irrelevant as well. Yep, so man. so with, with with me is 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 first about knowing how to breed and knowing how to put the stuff together because in today's thing, you know, you working with all kind of different type of bloods, you know. So far as going going back you really don't need to know the back. I'm not talking about the bloods in today. I'm talking about the bloods back then. You really don't need to know the bloods back then because, like you said, right now, nobody's not talking about Dex blood, you know, right now. Nobody's not talking about Remy line blood right now. Nobody's not talking about Gotti line blood. So I'm not talking about the blood today. He asked me about back then. So back then, you really don't need to know how the blood. You just need to know how things work, how, like, right now. Right now... If somebody's, you could have a, a tight, tight, nice breed and go together. If that dog don't have the bone or the look that that, that you want, you're going to sell it. Yeah. See, back in the day, we keeping the whole litter. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because if we know that's going to be good, we know we're going we gonna to check and see. But right now, everybody just going to sell whatever. If it don't look good right now, you're going to sell it. Yep. You know what I'm saying, but but a real a real breeder gonna tell you no, bro. If you've been if you've been waiting two years to throw that breeding together, man, hold that whole litter because you don't know how they're gonna turn out when they make eleven months. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. So so with with the you you thirteen generations in it on your yard, right? Yeah, yeah. On some of um some of my my dogs, I'm like twelve years in. Okay, so with that being said, <laughs> with that being said. Are you still going to go outside your yard if you feel like you are lacking something? And I had a question that follows that after that. Oh, definitely. You have to. You no 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 if ands or buts. You you have to. You have to go outside your yard at at certain points to um every everything evolve. With, with that being said, even though you could be as many generations as you want, you can't be kennel blind because somebody's going to come up with something. That's gonna have that wow factor, and if you kennel blind, you're gonna be like, "Oh man, I, I'm not fooling with that." But a, a, a true creator gonna look at that and be like, "Man, I got this bitch that I that's that's bred up that I know I could pull that trait out that dog that I was looking to get, and you're gonna get it." All right, I had a question for you last night. I wrote it in the comments, but we were coming to an end. How how much inbred? do you think you should do on your yard? Like, how, how often do you feel like inbreeding is necessary? And I'm talking about litter mate, brother, sister. Um, that's, that's, that's knowing your blood, bro. That's knowing your blood. That's, that comes with you doing it time after time. And, and cert, certain traits, certain traits, you know, you can knock out. Certain traits, you know, that you can't deal So, so all all that comes with comes with your blood, bro. Comes with how how many clean up dogs you got in your pad, where you know I bred, I took this clean female and bred it to this freaky this freaky male. Still came out mediocre. Then I do it again, and I see that I had minimum flaws. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Once I have minimum flaws, nine times out of ten, if you still like your your uh, outcome, you could do it again. You know, but yeah. with all this. All this blood being so sauced up is like now. Once, once you, once you, um, certain people, or certain blood, you do brother sisters. The that's where they starting to get them train wrecks. So it's all about how you mix your blood. And like, like I tell anybody, bro, it takes time. Everybody say that I know my blood. I know my blood. I know my blood, bro. It takes time and breedings and trial and error. Dogs that you don't even see, um, to. to to really know your blood. Yeah. Okay, I got another question. You said a lot of people are quick if, if they just not seeing it within that six month, let's just say three month period on a puppy, they'll be quick to sell it. Back when you started, y'all were keeping it. So what advice or, or what, yeah, what advice do you have to a breeder that is you know, drop litters that, oh, I could see results immediately versus, oh, I had the same, I got the pups at the same age. I'm not seeing nothing. Do you suggest them to stay down till they come up? Because whatever you ran, 
and a lot of people don't know, but a lot of people do, whatever blood you ran, that whatever that dog produced, as far as the litter mates, the dog that really didn't show them features always also carries the same, or, or they carry the same genetics and could push that into, you know, future litters. So do you suggest people like to stay down to come up, even if it's not looking like it to, in this day and age, or do you, are you just saying, go ahead and get rid of it if you're not seeing what you want right then and now? Uh, but I'm a, what I'm going to say is, bro, for, first off, you have you have breeders and then you have creators. Okay. Breeders breeders going to breed because they think this dog is hype and you hope. You know, you can have any kind of female. The female don't even match this super stud pad. So now you hoping that you get a nice dog. That's a breeder. A breeder is one that's going to fi find this hype dog, that hype dog, this hype dog, and breed to it. Breeders, breeders not gonna listen because they're gonna do what they want to do. That, that, that's why, that's why I don't mind giving free game because in people mind they're gonna still do what they want to do. Right. Now, now creators, it, 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 it don't matter if the dog is hype or not. A creator gonna find these dogs that with my female lacking. All right, I see this certain dog throwing that trait, so I'm gonna take my time and build it. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and, and once once a creator build, it's gonna come to a point where that creator gonna know. Damn, bro, spinning. We ain't got a call. This dog, no matter how I look, get what I want. You you break you, you breaking up, brother. You you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. <clears throat> you need. My boy, why if I don't crash? Somebody calling me. Oh, Yo. Hey, listen. Now, listen. I think uh, some of that stuff, though, uh, you got to know your blood, though. When you see it's trash and you know your blood pop out four, five months, you know what to look for. If you done had previous litter, then you know, you know what I'm saying? Because I done seen some dogs turn, you know, turn to some hitters, but ain't really look like nothing that pups. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Once you done had that litter, you know, though. Say, for instance, the honeycomb and the demon time. They don't, they don't look like, you know what I'm saying, like uh, bull out your blood. You know how bull out your blood I already had that it factor when they pup? Yeah. No, or, or KB, you know what I'm saying? KB pup. When they young, you can already see it. Yeah. Like, you know, these pups pop about four, 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 five months, but they look the same as pups. Like, so I know they hit them, you know what I'm saying? But when you post them, the world not going to know because they ain't necessarily know the blood at the early stage. They know the maturing, you know what I'm saying? Look, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So knowing your blood and how you keep certain pups. Yeah. I am dirty 357 said it's three different types of breeders. Either you a buyer, a seller, or a creator. Yeah, yeah. I, I and, and I, I say that because I know for a fact that the dogs back then didn't look like nothing that they do now. You know what I'm yep. saying? So that being said, that's why I asked him because I got a female that you know I'm like, damn, is she gonna really hit? I know the breeding that I did and where she come from. Like, I know I got the hitters in there, but. Is it really, am I, should I just wait, you know what I'm saying? Or should I just be like, ah, it's over with? Probably promote what's not true. It, uh, shit, it yep. depends. What, who's she alpha? Yeah, I, I think, I think what he's saying though, who's like you got breeders who just, And then you got a breeder who don't really care about what's what's going on, what money he get, what he sell, what he got to cost to buy. He and they're creating, so it's gonna take them two, three gins to make the perfect dog. And I know a breeder like that. Like I know a breeder who won't sell a dog 
if it's even mediocre, like he'll pit home it out or give it to some of his homeboys, don't really want to post it, but the dogs be all right, you know what I'm saying? I see he said he dog about four, five, you know I'm saying? He don't really care to sell him like that. He really is right, though, you know what I'm saying? You just saying as a breeder, the hell of your standard, then he going to be all three, but I get what he's trying to say. Yeah, bro. They had um one of one of to me one of my one of the best litters that that started that exotic movement. It was um a female called Romella. She was a um an inbred Romeo daughter, and um and how she she was like ugly, bro. She was like one of the ugliest dogs, but how she was bred back then they knew if they bred her to like the right blood, what was gonna pop. Man, they bred her, and, and like I said, some of the OG, some of the OG breeders know it was uh, Predator, Black Ops, Bananas. Then they went and bred Romella to Miyagi, and created um, some of the newer style exotics. And this was like one of the ugliest females, like one of the ugliest females that. Um, but it took them time to build that female, and they knew what was gonna be in her, what was gonna be in her. So, bro, yeah, yeah. Hey, if if I would never go out and buy an ugly female, but if you build a dog, every dog not gonna come out the way that you want it to be. Every dog is not mean not meant to be showed. I call them lab dogs. Every dog not meant to be showed, but they'll produce some of the fire stuff if it's bred the way you want it to be bred. Not 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 a new this is what I call the newer generation. They want it now. I wanna get it now. I want that look now. I wanna bring her to the show. I need it now, I need it now. But you have to build that to get to that point where you know you're not going to miss. Once you build it from the ground up, nine times out of ten, you'll have a lab dog. But you know, once you, that next generation is time. That next generation is going to smack. So it's time, bro. That, that's, that's what I tell anybody. It's time. Hey, that boy just dropped the song. Somebody he got called the lab dog. Boy, the breeders gonna be mad if he put it out like that, boy. Hey, not be mad. You got true though, up, because you know, one the thing that you just like, um, you had, you had uh, uh, it was an ugly female, but she was producing. I feel like that just falls back on the lines of the 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 the, the, the things. You know what I'm saying, like. Yeah, she might have not looked like her litter mates, and her litter mates is crashing. Got the, it's popping, it's presentable, it's at the shows. But here's direct, not yeah. direct, but little sister or brother that's not hitting nothing, but yet still producing. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I asked, man, just because I'm I'm simply going through that situation right now, and I ain't got, you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't. See it, and that, and I'm part of the generation where if seeing it, oh, it's some playmaster. I can't fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? But there are yeah, a lot right. of blood signs, like like D Glory just said, like it just pops later in life. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Right. See a lot. Look, and then a lab, lab dog don't necessarily have any right dog. Oh, a, a lab dog could be my my lab dog might be a dog that you want to take out to the show and show. You know what I'm saying? A lab yeah. dog is just something that you know that you that it have all the ingredients in there. It's just that look that 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 you had in your mind and your vision didn't come out completely in her. You know what I'm saying? Or or in him. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. So, so hold on. Ultimate so guy. Like, hold on. Uh, ultimate government line man he a vet in the game so what he just said probably need to be discussed he, he said the ugly female will produce with the ugly females but the production of the ugly females will produce that ugly female again so he's saying even though your ugly female produce some nice shit the the uh production of uh, the children of uh, will produce ugly grandkids that look just like the uh ugly female so basically, well, that, 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 that's not that's not necessarily always true because you got to think think about this. Yeah, one of these five, some of these five year dogs had to come off an ugly dog to to, to to constantly keep creating nice looking dogs. Mm -hmm. 
so 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 now what what I mean by that is if it's not bred up to your to your if it's not bred up how you want your blood to be consistent, it could still hit or miss. But all these fire dogs had to come from an ugly dog as well. Yeah, I got some of them did. Some of them. I, 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 got, some, I got some that came from an ugly baby mama that looked hella good. Man, I like I like properly provoked, man. What you don't agree with? You, you don't need no yes, man. So uh, properly provoked ain't no yes, man. He, he uh, whatever you know, man. What you don't agree with? Let me see if I can get him. Let Let me see if I can get him on real quick. Let me see properly. Yeah, properly promote. I don't know he want to tap in. He just shooting everything. I won't know what he. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'll hear real quick. Hey, he said, uh, Ultimate Guy Life, the but, chain is only strong at the weakest link. You have a lesser dog oh. in a bun. Oh, for sure. That, that, that's, that's your ultimate, that's your ultimate goal to create, to create a dog and constantly make that lineage better. For yeah. for sure, I'm not saying constantly go to get the other ugly dog. No, I'm saying when, when you breed a dog up the way you want it to be, that, that, that ugly dog could throw. You take the best one, and you, you constantly, you constantly go to the lineage that how you want it to be better and better and better. Yeah. that's how we got to these these nice looking dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. This is this key. Nice pup, a little. Um, yeah. For sure. For sure. That the breeding will get you far though. I don't For think sure. I understand that. For sure. I, I see, I see a lot of breeds. I don't understand. Like I don't know what they were trying to get from the type shit. You know what I'm saying? Felt some uh clout because the breeder might got clout or some or got motion. But um, then I also see what y'all got to say for the breeding for the true fire dog that you expected that dick dog, but he got down didn't do nothing. Everything looked rain there. Five five female and a five male. I mean, I know some of them are these Photoshop. Are you going off? Of, you going off the looks? Are you going off? You going off You going off the looks? You going off the uh, Probably, probably be going off look. Probably be going off look. Cause you know what I'm saying, bro. I, you know you don't You're see the head on the internet, but you just see this fire ass breeding battle. You know what I'm saying? These dogs and you waiting on it, and you feel me? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing my research. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, what you mean? Um, now nah, I'm saying when you have that five female, you see somebody take their five female to a five male and they don't get nothing. But then you take a mediocre female to that five male and you get all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? You ain't never seen that? But I'm asking you, are you going to take the best off of what really was the hitting at all and run it to what you feel like you need to run it to to bring that out, or you uh, me personally, I, I ain't never had that happen, but I, but, that, but, that, but that's what bro was saying. Just to go like our generation, prime example, did nothing come out, and we bred two hard dogs. What happened? Yeah, but it has to be in the gym, play man. So, it has to be in the gym. okay, so play man. So, so are, are you, you gonna, gonna take I the live. best of the, 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 the best of the play master? And to oh, wow. some exotic pressure and to produce, or are you getting rid of the whole litter? I'm getting rid of everything. See, I'm new school, so he old school. So they gonna keep it and build. But in this game right here, in this age of time, you ain't got time to wait on no dog to get older to see what he gonna do and put your time, your money in, and all this other shit, all these vet bills. I'm getting rid of all that. Oh. Phenotype, you know. Type, type ain't right. It's old. It. Like if I have a nice dog that don't produce, I ain't really, I ain't really gonna keep him. I ain't gonna try to keep pushing because they're just gonna lower your brain. You gotta kind, you gotta come back. You know what I'm saying? But um, boys, like I, I think, I okay, think that's so a false versus, statement. I on, think that's on, a false on, statement you just said, dog. So so versus new school and old school, it's more money in the dog now. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more people in the dogs now. It's a lot more social media, Ooh. so people seeing what you got going on now. They keeping on with you. It's about consistency, even with the dog, but also with the promotion. So if I'm not promoting these dogs, then you know my brand going down. So if I had a little and I ain't putting, I've been putting on for them to um to have the privilege and I ain't keeping up with them. People I already know they ain't looking. You know what I'm saying? It's just a game. You almost can figure some shit out. You know what I'm saying? Cause people post so much with something missing, you can figure out what the problem is. But so 
to keep some shit. I'm not doing. I'm getting rid of everything. I'm going back to the drawing board. I'm taking this girl somewhere else. See if she do it because before them puppies get one, that uh, dog will come and heat again. You will have another little. I want to know if it's her or them. If she ain't throwing nothing, she got to go. You know what I'm saying? But we can't keep. I don't keep it nothing in trying to build like that because the simple fact is so many breeders that putting together what need to be done the right way. You got to go buy the breed of that dog. You feel me? It's already yeah. done for you in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I bro, can agree with that, but what was hey, you about to hey, say, Black? Say not really. Hold on. He can say not really, but you just said you're doing your research and you're checking the page. You're doing the research and this is the work you're trying to do, what you're trying to put together. You can find what you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? If you, it, 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 it's no need to doing research if, 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 if you don't think what you're trying to get. Or what we're trying to get ain't already done. There's no need. You might well just go off off the look then. All right, I'm a, I'm gonna be the devil's advocate right quick. Mm -hmm. All right, you you just you just say you just say if your dog you don't care how look if your dog not producing you are gonna get rid of it correct? Mm -hmm. You just said that correct? Yep. Right. You just created this fire male now i'm about to duck you just created this fire male he's six months you open him up for sud everybody you done you you have you have a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of lock-ins right yeah he's not producing nothing you got all these lock-ins because everybody liked the way he looked but he's not producing so now you're telling me you're gonna get rid okay. of him okay so the thing is that you you kind of you kind of stuck with him you kind of stuck with him at that point but See, this is this the thing. I know everybody know dogs, they got a bunch of lock-ins that were not used. So logically, and the best thing for business, and, and you know what I'm saying, you got you to be a businessman. It is more than what you're All right, all right, all right see? All right, I don't want to cut you off. But see, that, that that's the difference. And, and people people like to argue back and forth, but that's the difference between, not, not saying that's a bad thing, bro. Get your, get your paper. I tell anybody, if you breeding, get your paper. Get your money, that's cool. See, that, that's the difference with with the, a lot of the older breeder that's still in it. The money is cool. That's fine. I, I applaud everybody who making their bread. I salute them. I want to do it, too. That's fine. But it, it's different when, when, when you more focus on creating. When you more focus on creating and you done took your time and built certain things, that's the different people that, that will hold that to try to keep creating because we know what we could do with it. Now, when you're looking at it as a business aspect, yeah, it's different because business-wise, it, it's just like production. We're trying to get this production out to move better production in. That's the difference. You know what I'm saying? So so with that being said, when when you're talking to different people, this but this is what I like. You're going to always get different kind of opinions and outlooks when you're coming from two different Two different yeah, lanes. So you see what I'm saying? Answering your question now. I'm gonna finish answering your question, and I'm gonna hit on the other stuff you just said too. So, you said you you um uh, basically tapped in to the point where you was like people the money and the lock ins basically. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't agree with lock ins with six months if you got all that. So basically, what I was proceeding to say was I'm gonna keep running that dog if they keep making money because if people they see in production, everybody know a lot of. Stuff. They got a bunch of lock ins that ain't get used. People don't even care about it no more. They just like he can keep it. I don't even want it. You know what I'm saying? So basically, if 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 they still coming to the dog, then they have no reason to use. And they might might be my, my standard, but it's about what the community want at the end of the day. It's about what you like, but it's about what the buyers are trying to buy too. So you also got to when it's a business aspect, you got to know that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, if they use them, it's no need to get rid of. Them. But you know it, it ain't giving what you want, so you gonna still be in a lab. Now that's out of the other net. But if if they not using dog, we get we getting rid of it. Now six months with a uh, lock in, and people doing their research, they know it's dog lock in, know it's dog not to. You know what I'm saying? But it's also good. A lot of people don't think it's a lot of people who don't get a lot of lock in early lock in don't think it's good. But all the only reason it's good is that that might be the difference from you having a top stud. It's like buying in stock. When you buy early, it's way cheaper. Uh, well, you know what I'm saying, $1,000. So, you know what I'm saying, if you buy in, you might get it $1,500, 2000 And then other than, then uh, paying that goddamn five or, or that 3500 You know what I'm saying? So it might save you a couple grand if you do your research and you believe this is what it's going to be. 
but that's like a breeder being a breeder. But I seen somebody come back, I mean, come and say the rich, the pet ain't really the pet. That's true in a lot of cases, but you know what I'm saying? A lot of time, bro, shit, early lock in. Like, if you got them, that's your business, but you can't get rid of them. People still want to use them. Nine times ten, that dog ain't producing. They're going to stop using It's going to drop anyway. They're going to stop using it. Yeah. I, I, I just said that to be the double advocate because when, when you say it, if it's not producing, we have a lot of we have a lot of super studs that just because the owner have them, of, of, co of course, if you breed a dog 20,000 times, you're going you to smack with something. You know what I'm saying? But they still have a lot of studs that, that don't care. You know what I'm saying? If that money coming in, it, it is what it is. That's it's good. It, it's good. It's good for for the buyer. Yeah. You know, to have somebody in their corner, especially new, that knows what it is, know how to breathe. You know. Right. And also, I want to listen to though. Every um, uh, every, every every uh people that say uh she I mean say something ain't producing. I also want to throw this in there because uh, you know, different dogs have different markets. So some dogs ain't gonna like that freaky shit that we like. We may like. You know what I'm saying? So when they when it's not throwing that freaky shit, and we looking at them because it looks similar to the dog we like. It looked like it fit in the category and to the dog we like, but it's paid not there, and the people are using them constantly. They not expecting it to be there. We'll say it producing, and he still got motion because he he still he in another class. The people using him in another class, they using him for something else that they don't like what we like. You know what I'm saying? Still a market for all that. So a lot of times we blind him by all that, huh? Like say as far as what? I say if some dogs, I, I see some dogs that throw a nice ass rear and no front, and then some dogs throwing more of a clean, clean exotic look, and um, or, and uh, some some dogs, um, yeah, more more, more pocket, more pocket and shit. You know what I'm saying? Some people breed and tend them for that. You know what I'm saying? Some people breed and shit out, and they like to say they ain't producing. You know what I'm saying? But it re they really got them producing what they went for, and when they looked at the pay, this they were looking for. You know what I'm saying? They don't watch. So I like, I like, I'm not, I'm not saying you, but a lot of people be blind by their class of dogs. Cause we like freaky. When it ain't freaky, they be like it's trash. But it might be a fight. Pocket, he go in the ring and win for best, best of show. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people be blind. Right, let's say, yeah, exotic, oh, yeah. exotic, straight fluff. Man, a lot of it's healthy. Y'all, I mean, a lot of people just don't like how they. They just don't. Let, let me let me ask you this, D Glory, because I feel like a lot of people actually run into this issue, but really, let's just say this: you got that stud that's running, and they saying he's not producing. Yeah, could it possibly be he just ain't hit the blood that he clicks with. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I like, bro, said you got all these lockies. This dog got us. Spark or something, it just it has to. Be you gotta fight yeah. It hurt. yeah. And nine times out of ten, bro, what I've observed over the last three years, the dog that ain't that you ain't really see throw himself has not hit its own blood yet. It just yeah. has it. Yeah. So let's just say you do finally hit your own blood, and I've witnessed it. I did it. It scored. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just did. Now you got. Some some dogs, whatever they hit, they scorn. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. So and then, I wouldn't, and... I wouldn't truly just cross cross the dog out because it didn't score with every blood. You know what I'm saying? I can't do that. But you, that's that'll have to come down to a selective breeding. You know what I'm saying? They got to be selective with him. And then some dogs, you down, they could take anything. So he like a super producer. Yeah, the other one still might be a producer, but the one who can hit anything. He's a super producer. He can bring it out of him. You know what how I'm many, saying? Postman underscore exotic says, how many dogs you have to purchase before you find out? Purchase or produce? I think he said produce. I mean, over time, you're going to see, like, uh, bro, because, you know, a lot of people bring big dogs to dogs. They bring skinny dogs. They trying to break them down. You can't look at that little at all. If it's in a different class, don't, don't compare the stud off that class. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? When they bring something micro, all right, it should throw some uh, shit, shit like him or some all right shit. You know what I'm saying? It might go next level. But shit, um, 
I, I think producing like he should produce like I don't know if it even should be every little, but he should have some dogs out there though. He should really have some dogs out there. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be like twenty little and only one here. You feel me? When they buy out of you, they they trying to buy that dog. You know what I'm saying? It, it should at least resemble. We can't hear you, dog. Your phone, bro. You must have got your, your shit on mute. Your phone, your, your phone muted. My fault. I, I was saying I, I I agree because at the end of the day, you you purchased the dog or you used the dog because you wanted a dog to look like him. Yeah. Yeah, fact. Fact. You wanted something out of the color, the bowl, the head, the structure. You wanted something. Now if you don't get nothing, now goddamn, you feel me? I, I, I tell people this all the time. I said this yesterday, bro. One of the one of the things, one of the problems in a dog game right now, with, with so many people hopping in and seeing, like like if we see a certain dog that we like, we look at it and don't know the flaws and expect, you know, um, this is how a dog's supposed to look. One, one of the things that a lot of people don't know in a dog game is the confirmation of how a dog really supposed to look not 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 meaning not meaning that's gonna be my style or uh, uh, your style but first you need to know the correct confirmation of how a dog supposed to look you know straight leg what is a t good top line you know uh how a dog real supposed to look because now if you know how a dog supposed to look you could start critiquing your style or how you how you want your dog to be. Right. So a lot of people really don't know how a dog, good a perfect confirmation dog, supposed to look. Once again, not saying that it's our cup of tea, but you supposed to know how a correct dog supposed to be. Then you could start doing this to it and doing that to it. But if you don't know how a dog look, you could see a dog with his mouth hanging out because it look good. You think a dog supposed to look like that when it really don't. You know, far as easty, westy, a high rear. If you see a nice looking dog with, with a high rear, you just like how that dog front look. You thinking that's how the dog's supposed to look when it don't supposed to look like that. So if you don't know how a dog, confer, confirmation dog, nice, clean dog supposed to look, you ain't going to know how to critique it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I absolutely agree, man. Okay. This is a this is a question that uh, after your interview last night, Black Diamond, the pit had you know what I'm saying just post post your interview, and they were asking like let's let's throw this loop let, let's just throw this topic out there. When it comes to our breed, the dogs that we breeded, what are the standards that we should really apply? Wait, you know what I'm saying or abide by when it comes to exotic breeding. Wait, hold on one sec. Hold on one second. Let me answer this. They say, but well, nobody ain't breeding. I never said to breed for a confirmational dog. I'm saying that you should know if you don't know how the dog's supposed to look. Right. How would you create the dog that you want to create? Exactly. You know, if, if you don't, if you don't know your dog have a high rear. And you bring it to the show and people laughing at you, that's because you don't you don't know. Yeah. So you should have the knowledge of how a dog's supposed to look so you could create the dog that you want to create. I'm not saying none of yeah. my dogs not no strictly. I'm just saying you should know how a dog's supposed to um look. What you say? What you say, Flick? So with that with that being said, you hold that to a certain standard, correct? How a dog's supposed to look. What are those standards? Um, for, for, for th that, not, now this is a, that's an opinion based, um, opinion yeah, based question, <laughs> you know, that that's a, a opinion, my, but, mine and yours would be different, but it's opinion based. You're absolutely right. But we want to know, like, what should we, what should we try to, what should we be trying to, uh, really incorporate when it comes to the dogs? Like, what is it that we should Definitely be trying to score as far De as the overall. Definitely, definitely to me is the structure of the dog. You could have bowls, you could have crazy fronts, 
you could have straight legs, you could have whatever. My my pet peeve is a night a, a, a structural dog, a compact, clean top line, um, thick bone, and from there everything else. You know, um, long, long to, to me, long as your dog compact, ass not in the air, easy, what's the You know, every, everything else is, is is opinion based. You know, some people don't like bows. Some people Man, like bows. Let me some let, people, let me tell you my dog. Nice front, it ain't got to be too much. Thick all the way through. No high rear. I don't like that cricket face. You know, the ones with the cricket face, I don't like the cricket face. Easty Westy feet, bro. I might, I take an underbite way before I take Easty Westy feet. I won't breathe to it. I don't want no pup off of it. I damn no, I ain't going to stir that. I ain't going to never do nothing with no Easty Westy feet. That's just my pet peeve. You feel me? I don't like that. And I'm going to take that thick body. I'll take. Thick body all the way through over compact. Feel me? Like if it's always, you know what I'm saying, proportioned out right, kind of long, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Over compact. Compact gonna be a flood. But see it, I don't really care if it's a tail, but you know what I'm saying? Easty West defeat, though. That's the biggest. I can't I can't do it. That that definitely should be the number one not accepted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. like bro said, not every dog is a show dog. Same yeah. dog. Now that dog that got Easty West he might yeah, have the silliest bone, the girth, the compact, the short back, the nicest top line, the full tail, the big head, the the perfect. But only thing that was dogged out was the feet. Yeah, it ain't complete. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people want to sit back and know like what are the some standards that we should definitely execute when it comes to the exotic breed. And I say that to say this because it is. It the is doable. Like y'all can do it. Y'all listen, y'all said all of that. I promise you, y'all said all of that, but the key is the fucking rears. The rears, the rears the, mm -hmm. the booty back there. I mean, I I mean you you're right. The, you can't be I want my rears to match the fronts. You know what I'm saying? Just everything hitting. But it's a lot of dogs out there that are not complete yet it, there's still uh, people call them tools bro call them lab dogs i feel like some people are so uh quick like he said as well to get the dog at the show show the front is hitting and leaning over the back of it it, it it just ain't it ain't what it is you know what i'm saying somebody yeah, most definitely. <laughs> Uh, definitely. Like me a dog. Can you see him, man? Can you see him, man? Hello. Can we view us? Get it, please. Yeah, I, I'll pull I'll pull a little bill out. I don't mind pulling them out. They say East to West is not no lab, dog. Bro, you done gave him a new term now. You done created a new term. Like, he didn't tell him. He didn't tell him stuff. Think of you now. Every time I see, it, every time you see, it, just know that's what you put in the head. Watch how it blew up in the bullet <laughs> game. Loud dog, loud dog. Oh, bro, you know she ain't like that. She she a loud dog. This my loud dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you loud dog. Yeah, you you did that. <laughs> you did that. I, I, I said a, a little dog. too much. That, hey, bro, that, that's why I stay off alive, man. I don't be on live too much. I don't be on, <laughs> hey, on live at all. Name. If live wasn't good before Playman started doing Breakfast Bullet Club, it's it's definitely good now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, real so good. And I ain't gonna let, let me let, let me put let me put unique, unique started the Breakfast or the Bully Shout Breakfast out, Club. Man. Out of you, unique. I like niggas who get niggas they flowers. Shout out to you from goddamn. <laughs> you feel me? I be tuned, tapped in, like straight up. For real though, bro. Like we we really been pushing it, man. Yeah. We got. Oh, yeah, we got uh, we got we got a whole uh, flyer coming. It's it's about to go down, bro. Again, anybody on here that has any type of uh, quick commercial break, if you got any type of uh, merch or anything that y'all want to send to us, you can hit me or Unique for the address. Send it to us. We will put it on. Shout out to my dog, the In the Land Bullies man, Bugatti. You know what I'm saying? Hey, make sure y'all tap in the bros program. 
Hey, hey real bro. quick, D Glory, let them know where you coming from, real quick. Man, two EK, I had to call. This your boy D Glory, man. Uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Y'all, hmm. y'all follow me, man. Y'all follow me. Appreciate you, Lord, yes, for tapping on the uh, Bully Breakfast Club this morning, brother. Remember, tomorrow, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is when we started. Hey, Black Diamond, let them know where you come from, who you represent, brother. Black Black Diamond Bullets, bro, calling out of New Orleans from part of the pit. Yeah. Wolf Pit, for sure. Wolf Pit. Play, I'm going to show my boy. I'm going to show my boy right quick. A couple people asked to see him. Okay. That's cool. Oh, yeah, he got good, good phone. Um, mm. It's a little blurry. Let me see. But we can see that doggy. Try to, if you could, try to stay still. Hold on. Let me let me let me put him on his table right quick. Okay. That. And shout out to uh Ultimate Gotti Line man. Uh DM me, bro. We would like to get you on the show sometime this week. Whenever it's a, whenever yeah. you're available, because yeah. I know you are very informative when it comes to these dogs and got a lot of you know uh generations under your belt as well. So uh free your schedule up, bro, because uh um uh, interview with Ultimate Gotti Line is definitely coming to the Bully Breakfast Club here soon. Yes, sir, Ryan, you already know. I wanted to ask yesterday. Well, I guess that time. So he ready. Yeah, man, he teething. So he shitting, fever, <laughs> pranking. Already know. Let them know what, for those that don't know, let them know uh, who this is, Black Diamond. That's all for, uh, that's Lil Bill, all for Suki, he, uh, everybody know. Everybody know Fat Al? I created Fat Al. That's Fat Al half brother. Litter make brother or different different uh mothers. Same same mother, different dads. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, bro. Okay. So now would you do would you do the repeat? Uh not nah, nah, because I, I, I have something else cooking up that I feel, you know, I, I, I did my little test run with that. I got something else cooking up on that end. Okay. Hey, man, that's a phenomenal dog, bro. That, like, would you consider him or exotic or just like a, a micro bull? Um, that, 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 see, that, that, that'll be another good conversation because um, I consider him an exotic micro. Okay. Okay. All right, bro. Well, let them know where you coming from, real quick, sure. man. We about to sign off. For sure. And let them know once again, Black Black Diamond, Diamond Bully, bro, coming Bully. out of coming out of New Orleans, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Everybody into the Breakfast Bully Club, nine o'clock. Appreciate y'all letting me come on, man. bro. Appreciate you joining this morning, brother. For yeah, real, though, man. Keep bro. eating. For sure, bro. I holler at y'all, man. Yes, okay, man. All right, you let them know what it is with you, bro. Man, you already know. Shit, tune in tomorrow, 9, nine to 11. If not, you know, we're going a little further, but tune in tomorrow. Bully Breakfast Club. Film is unique. Home of, the, home of CP. 2K, 500 lot. Yes, sir, no man. Appreciate that. Hey, man, again, a quick PSA. We got we got a, a money get cash giveaway with uh the wolf pit i'm gonna tell y'all how to do it real quick i'm gonna post it on my story 
everybody put everybody go to the wolf pit page repost your favorite post tag the wolf pit and comment or not comment but message done to the wolf pit after you tag your favorite post you will be entered in the drawing for a hundred dollars cash app so make sure that i'm gonna repost it on my story that y'all go and follow the wolf pit repost your favorite picture and, and, and uh make sure your message is done you know what i'm saying to be entered on that once again i'll push it put it on my story everybody man i appreciate y'all jumping on the bully breakfast club this morning remember this goes on monday through friday 9 to 11 a.m make sure that y'all tune in to the hottest dog show every morning man the bully breakfast club is play mad with play mad kennels home of that boy indiana bones indy uh crazy bone clone hey it's been real, y'all. Let's eat!